and TBS Newswatch. Stop one, Daytona. Fords win the top four spots. Stop two, Rockingham. Last week, Fords plays first and second. 692 laps on two Sundays. Ford leads an awesome 641. Now you're live in Richmond, Virginia, another Sunday, and guess what? Another Ford's on the pole. Many are saying the season's over. But hold on. This is Earnhardt country. This is where GM has won the last three, 18 of the last 21. Settle back. This is the one that could tell the story. Excitement 400 is brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement by Goodyear, number one in tires. By Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. By Astral, engineered for today's smaller cars. And by Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. And hello everyone, Ken Squire welcoming you to sold out Richmond International Raceway for the 32nd running of the Pontiac 400. You know, for the last nine straight years, Chevrolet has taken the Winston Cup Manufacturers Championship. And back in 76, GM started winning the thing. And one way or another, they've taken it ever since. Ford, for 92, has launched a massive effort to take that manufacturer's crown. But after you've run the two and a half miles at Daytona, after you've run the mile super speedway in Rockingham, you get down to the tracks where it really gets decided, the championship that is. The short tracks, the guts and glory of stock car racing, and Richmond, Virginia is one of its very best examples. If Ford is going to be considered a serious contender, then they have to come here to what is called Earnhardt country, Gantt territory, if they are really going to pr prove today that they can take the manufacturer's title, this is the day they've got to show their stuff. Let's get one of the challengers out and ready with us now. Randy Pemberton is standing by. Well, I'm standing next to Bill Elliott, of course. The runs that he had in the first two races of 1992 have been simply splendid. Many people are saying it's simply the Ford technology that's bringing the Fords to the forefront in the chasing of their first manufacturer's championship at nine years. Others saying cylinder heads that are giving them a 30 horsepower advantage over the best that General Motors can throw at them. But I believe more than that, it's team, it's communication. Bill Elliott, you, Tim Brewer, Junior Johnson, you guys really communicate. You're a great chassis man. This is probably why you're the guy to beat here today. Well, I don't know if I'm exactly the guy to beat. You know, coming into a new environment, you know, there's certain things we got to learn about certain racetracks. You know, like Rockingham, we pretty much had everything on track. Daytona, we were good. But here's going to be a situation that, you know, Gantt runs good here, Davey runs good here, and there's a lot of other competitors back there that run well here. You know, this is the first time for me in a Laughlin car in a long time, so, you know, we have got a little bit to learn, depending on how quick we can get that under us and the circumstance of the race, but I feel like we'll, we, we should have a good day. Well, he's got 400 laps to figure it out. Now let's go alongside on the front row to Dr. Dick Bergeron, editor of Stock Car Racing Magazine, who's standing by with the Winston Cup points leader and outside pole sitter, Davey Allison. And the winner at Daytona, second last week, a great team. Is this going to be easy today? Well, Dick, I don't think so. There's a bunch of other guys in this racetrack that are pretty tough competitors, and they've all been working hard. They haven't been sitting back just watching us have an easy time of it. And it's going to be a tough race today. Okay, let's go back down to Randy Pemberton, and right now he's with a guy who's won twice here. Randy? Rusty Wallace, this is your racetrack. Uh, a lot of people have been looking for you to come out of the block strong. This is a place you could do it today. I hope you're right. I really want to win this thing real, real bad. Uh, the car's really running good. It's always run good every time I come here, so I got my fingers crossed. I need to make up a lot of lost points. Okay, he's going to be chasing the Fords today. Now let's go upstairs to the guy that knows everything about Fords as well as Chevrolets, a guy that's won here three times, our analyst for today's race, Neil Bonnet. Thank you, Randy. You know, we hear the Ford Chevrolet deal over and over and over. There's usually a reason why one team dominates. It's been 1980 since Ford ran anything other than a Ford product, the Mercury's back in the 70s. 
Now Chevrolet has been running with Fords, Buick, Oldsmobiles. They've ran the Pontiac uh, brands, the different types that's been there. They've been going along trying to get different manufacturers up front. Ford has had all their eggs in one basket. They've been working on that Ford engine. It's really performing well. Chevrolet's trying to pull everybody back together, get their eggs in one basket. Right now, they're behind, and it's showing up. They're going to have to get to work to catch these Ford products. Well, I tell you what, we got the greatest day in the works for a race right here. Beautiful day, packed grandstand, and a bunch of wind-hungry race car drivers down there. Let's go to a break, and we'll be right back. Looks great. But come on, I mean, you know, you could have gotten yourself another BMW or a Lexus. I suppose. But why? This had everything I wanted. Power, great handling, ABS, yeah, but airbag, so leather, everything. I couldn't see spending 10, 20,000 more for what? Who makes it? Pontiac. It's the new Bonneville. Nice. Welcome to a world of new ideas from Goodyear. Welcome to the tire that's changing all season driving. Goodyear Aqua Tread. To the new Goodyear Eagle GS Ultra Performance Radios. To the new Leading Edge Goodyear Wrangler GSA Radio for light trucks. Welcome to all of the new ideas at Goodyear. Come and discover why we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. And isn't it true that this auto part did, in fact, come from the defendant's car? Objection! Prosecution is leading the witness. Overruled. You may answer the question. This part most definitely came from that car. And how can you be sure? I work for Napa Auto Parts. It's my job to be sure. No further questions, Your Honor. Napa people are parts experts, so they can answer any question, whatever the case may be. How to live like a mountain man. A true mountain man lives a solitary life, living for nothing more than an honest day's work and the rugged companionship of his fellow mountain men. It's a full-time job, but it does have its rewards, like smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush life. So, head for the mountains. Because once a mountain man has his mountains, what more could he possibly want? Well, we have a new voice down at the STP Pit Center today. Welcome from MRN Racing Network, a man whose credentials go back to the old days of the Danbury Racerama. Rick Benjamin, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Ken. Certainly a pleasure to be here. A lot of stories we'll be bringing you today in the STP Pit Communication Center. One thing we want to bring you up to date on the Winston Cup point standings after two weeks of the season. Davey Allison off his win at Daytona, leading the way over Morgan Shepard. Harry Gant, yesterday's winner here, and Terry Labonte tied for third. Jeff Bodine very consistently in fifth at this point. Uh, and the gap between the top five, pretty small at this point, two weeks into the season. Lots, of course, uh, lots of money at stake in the Winston Cup chase. One thing you can participate in at home today is the Gillette Halfway Challenge. Here's the phone number to call, 1-900-436-7000, 95 cents a call, and you must be 18 or older to make that phone call. If you call and enter in the first half of the race, one entry will be pulled. If you're the person who's called back after halfway, and you can tell us who's leading at halfway, you'll win a brand new Chevrolet Lumina Z34 from Gillette and Wright Guard. And that's something that certainly you can get involved in. The driver leading at halfway gets $10,000 from the Gillette Halfway Challenge today. Here again, we take a look at the top five in Winston Cup points and the gap between only 74 points separating the top five drivers. There's a name there that you'd be expecting to see at this stage of the season. He's conspicuous by his absence. The five-time and defending Winston Cup champion who's standing by on pit road with Arctic Burger. Well, Dale, last year you won this thing from 19th starting position, but this year, if you're any further back, you'd be in the hot dog stand. Can you win it from this far back? I don't know. We've uh, won, we went round one and run second from the back before, so, you know, it's just a matter of time. you got to be smooth and work with the traffic. Uh, it's 400 laps, so we got a, quite a good shot at getting up there. The guys are good in the pit, so hopefully they help me some there. So we'll just keep uh, this good wrench shovel, like, keeps moving to the front, so hopefully. We're going to keep watching it. Randy Pemberton is with Kyle Petty. Well, Kyle Petty qualified on the pole last week at Rockingham. Kyle, you're third today. Can you get the chassis hooked up and chase down these four? We, ho we hope so. You know, uh, since Robin went to work for us, Robin Pemberton, we we've been able to qualify the Melly Pontiac really, really well each week. But uh, last week at Rockingham, it was my mistake. I kept wanting to do things I wanted to do and wasn't listening to him. This week, we're listening to him, so hopefully we're going to come out on top. Okay, now down with Dick Bergeron is a 13-time winner here at Richmond, the man that will hang up his helmet after this season the king, Richard Petty. 
What kind of a day is it going to be for Richard Petty today? Well, I don't know. We're going to go find out. Looks like it's going to be a good day to start with. If we make it do that all day long, it's going to be a good shape. How well are you running? Pretty good. We think we're in pretty good shape, but we'll just have to go see. Okay, we've got a lot of stories brewing here at Richmond International Raceway, and we're going to be back to see them all unfold after these brief messages. Lots of action coming from Richmond. torture chamber and under these grueling conditions only one leading motor oil in every grade meets the world's toughest requirements for viscosity breakdown castrol castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown so use castrol why make things tougher on your engine castrol gtx engineered for today's smaller cars drag racing results on castrol's nhra now dial 1-900-468 nhra Today's contact takes on... Carol's horrible cold. I have a lot of congestion in through here. I'm like it's going to blow off the top of my head. You took a cold pill, right? The effects wore off. The congestion's coming back. That's because ordinary cold pills can quit working after just four hours. Try contact. You'll get continuous relief for up to 12 hours. I felt wonderful. All my symptoms were gone. Everything dried up. It's for busy people who have no time to be sick. This is a great product, and I'm going to go out and buy it tonight. Today's contact, 12 hours stronger than Carol's horrible cold. Hey, Mike. Hand me my channel on flyers. Tommy, give me that flyer over there with the blue handies. What kind of flyers is that? These are channel lock tone and groove flyers. My dad uses them on his race car, too. For the tough jobs and the small jobs, reach for channel lock, the handiest flyer of them all. Hey, guys, anybody seen the channel lock flyers? Channel lock. Be sure you're getting genuine channel lock flyers. Look for this trademark. Pontiac Excitement 400 ready to go and an honorary starter about to turn them loose. Let's go downstairs. And now for the most dramatic words in the world of professional sports, our Grand Marshal Linda Petty. Let the Pontiac Excitement begin. Gentlemen, start your engines. Linda Petty, all business today and the 30-second running of the $690,000, 300-mile Pontiac 400 about to get turned loose. Ken, I went by and talked to Dale Inman on the way up while we are talking about Richard Petty, and I said, Dale, how's the car doing? It's the first time I've seen him as, as enthused as he was today. He's in really good shape. Here you see the pictures out of first the uh, car of Mark Martin, and now Trop Optic number 66, Chad Little, will be able to chat with him, we hope, some this afternoon as the day continues. 400 laps, there's the man on the pole, Bill Elliott, settling down, going for two in a row after that great win when he dominated at Rockingham last week. I tell you, Junior and, and the guys have really hit it off well, Tim Brewer with Bill Elliott, and they're showing the, that there can be a force in the first few races, and I think the feeling in the garage may be all season long. Two in-car cameras for you today. There's Richard Petty's car. Just about ready to fire up and pull out here. The track upon which he's won 13 events. Let's take a look at this track for a moment. Remember, it's three-quarters of a mile. You can average 122 miles an hour around this thing. Neil, tell us a little bit about this facility, which you know so well. Ken, everybody says this is a super speedway. It's a short track. It's a combination. We see the big dog leg on the front straightaway. Big bow in the front straightaway. Really lets the cars get a lot of speed going down in the first turn. Front stretch is eight degrees. Back back stretch two degrees of bank when you get in that first turn it's in the green area in the right side real sweeping turn but coming off two it almost cuts back in real tough getting off two back straight away good entry coming off four real easy exit it's easy in some places but sure bite you in the others <laughs> it is a sold out house over 60,000 people have gathered here and sold out for some time at Richmond International Raceway Paul Sawyer's great facility as we get down to race number three 
of the 1992 season. After that dynamic start at Daytona, on to Rockingham, and the issue is today, not so much Chevrolet, but can Pontiac General Motors finally stymie this effort? And there you get a good view of this entire facility, this three-quarter mile track, where when next we greet you in September, it will be at night. Pace car is bringing the field down off pit road. They'll be taking four preliminary laps, and then underway, 40 mile an hour limit on pit road today. Let's take a look at the Valvoline starting grid for this afternoon's action. Bill Elliott's on the pole at 121.337 miles per hour, one last week. Then Davey Allison, who won at Daytona, starts right alongside. Going to row two is Kyle Petty, who won this race back in 86. With him comes Sterling Marlin and the other Junior Johnson Ford. For row three, there you have Alan Kowicki, who made his debut here back in 85. And Harry Gant, who else? Who won here last September and yesterday as well. Going to row four is Michael Waltrip, still looking for that first win. And alongside from Alabama, Hutt Strickland driving for Bobby Allison. Going to row five, you have Brett Bodine, who ran eighth last week at The Rock, and Ernie Irvin, who won the 91 Daytona 500. Further back in the field, Morgan Shepard, currently second in the standings, and Rusty Wallace, a two-time winner on this track. In row seven, it's Ken Schrader in the Rick Hendricks Chevy and Jeff Bodine, the legendary Butmore car. For row eight, it's Mark Martin, winner of this event a couple of years back, and Jimmy Spencer from Pennsylvania in the Travis Carter car. Row nine is the native from Virginia, Rick Mast, and the six-time winner at Richmond, Darrell Waltrip. In row 10, it's Terry Labonte, currently tied for third, and the 85 winner down at Daytona on the fourth, Greg Sachs. As our Valvoline lineup continues here, Dale Jarrett and Dick Trickle are in row 11. For row 12 this afternoon, it's Chad Little and Bobby Hamilton set to do battle. Richard Petty is in the 13th row on the inside with Derek Cope alongside. In row 14, Ricky Rudd well back today, and the guy who started here, Dave Marcus, car number 71. In the 15th row is Dale Earnhardt. Boy, what a long way back for Dale. 29th spot, and Jeff Fuller, the rookie from Massachusetts, starts alongside. Row 16 is Wally Dollenbach Jr. from Colorado, and Ted Musgrave in the number 55 getting set for a go. Finally, in the row 17 is Jimmy Means and Stan Smith, a couple of Alabama natives, and out back, Charging Charlie is all the way back in that 35th starting position. Lots back, came here years ago with uh, Junie Don Levy, did some racing back here in the 70s. He's back today tailgating the field in Don Levy's car number 90. You know, yesterday everybody was saying, how old is Charlie Blasbeck? Well, Red Farmer was here, and I was trying to find out from Red how old Charlie was, and he said he used to go watch him when he was a kid. Yeah, sure. Now, there's a couple of storytellers. Charlie was second here in 1968 on this track. Pace car, the Pontiac pace car bringing the field by, and again, you're looking out of Mark Martin's car number six. That Valvoline Ford settles down for an afternoon of adventure on a track which always gives us a lot of excitement. Ken, I tell you what, when this race starts, someone to really watch for is the two car of, of Rusty Wallace. Rusty in practice yesterday was a lot quicker than anyone here. If anybody's due a good day of racing this now, they've been off the pace and they've got the car working very well. Also, Hutch Strickland, the first, he's the quickest Chevrolet in the field. Those two cars showed a lot of strength in practice yesterday afternoon. Back straight away, car number 28, Davey Allison, picking up a little as you take a look at the weather here. It's going to break up toward the 70s before this day is done. Had a lot of rain the last two or three, but it's settled down into a beauty. Pace car bringing the field out of three and four, noses down on a pit road. And here we go, 32nd annual Pontiac 400 from the Richmond International Raceway is underway. into the first turn. It's Elliott trying to draw away a bit. Davey Allison locks onto the rear bumper. Kyle Petty staying in third. In the back straight away and up into number three. First time around. Coming to full speed. Alan Kowicki getting down on the inside of Sterling Marlin. They stack them three wide. They come down that main straightaway with Harry Gant on the bottom trying to make a move and getting shut off right there. There you see Hutt Strickland in the 12 and the 30 of Michael Waltrip. Out in front, as we come around to complete lap number two, you have
Smith, Bill Elliott in the lead, Davy Allison in second, Kyle Betty is in third. Maintaining fourth and drawing away from that fifth place car is Sterling Marlin. Then Kowicki is in the fifth spot. Harry Gant is back in sixth. Strickland is riding right along in seventh, followed by Michael Waldrop in eighth. And Brett Bodine is in ninth. Good start for 35 cars. Nearly $700,000. Incredible payoff for a short track. Harry Gant in the 33, down on the inside, going to one. Gant was remarkable yesterday in the Ed Whitaker car. He just gets better and better. Here's Gant down on the inside, Kowicki high in number seven out of two. And Harry Gant's on his way, picking up a spot. This for fifth, and here comes Hunt Strickland with him. Alan Kowicki's Ford getting a bit high, and Harry Gant with the Oldsmobile noses down to the bottom. Look at Hutch Strickland hanging on to the bottom of that racetrack, and Strickland in number 12 is taking the spot. And Michael Waltrip, who was within eight laps of a second-place finish at Daytona, in that car number 30, he's looking good in the early going. Here's your leader. It's Elliott out in front with Davey Allison in second. Again, this is not super speedway racing where you see a guy get hung out in aerodynamic loss. This is a positioning loss. Once you get on the outside line, they take that preferred lane away from you, and it's hard to get back in line. And Alan Kowicki's having to fight for everything he gets. Averaging 118 miles an hour, it's Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia, out in front from the Alabama gang. Davey Allison in second, and Kyle Petty looking a very strong third in that Pontiac for the moment. Fords one and two, Pontiac in three. Back up front. Gives you an idea of the interval between first and second down the back straightaway here on this three-quarter mile track. Up on the 18-degree banking and hugging the bottom of the track. Elliott looking just as strong as he did with that Tim Brewer prepared car one week ago. Not only one week ago, Ken, all season long. At Daytona, they were a big force there and they were involved in the wreck. Since that's happened, they've almost been unbeatable. And here he is just stretching on lead right now. beginning to develop a little further back. You see it developing for third spot. That is Sterling Marlin closing in on number 42, Kyle Petty. Struggle for third. Take a look at Harry Gant here, running in fifth spot in car number 33. Hutton Strickland has moved around and has now lost about a second to him there. Again, while we're watching Harry Gant here, even though he's in that position there, He's running faster than the leader right now. He's the only guy on the racetrack running faster laps than Bill Elliott. Davey Alliston was asked, do you think that the driving style of Harry Gant is unique? No, I just do what I have to do to pass somebody. You know, I'll, I'll watch them maybe at first. Yeah, like passing cars, some cars, but the back to back's easy if you get up into that top 10 and it gets harder then you got quicker cars. So you got to watch them maybe a lap and see what the best thing to do to beat them. And, uh, and I try to do what it takes to, to get under them then. Harry Gant maintaining the fifth spot in car number 33 at the moment. Winner here yesterday is Elliott stays up in front. Davey Allison is in second. Back in 10th spot right now is Rusty Wallace. Let's see what he'll do before this day is done. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. And you should, too. The monthly specials at True Value Hardware Stores, like Tough Flare AstroTurf Doormats for just $5.99 each. They have a slip-resistant backing and are easy to clean, too. In March, they're just $5.99 each while supplies last. They're just one of the terrific specials at True Value, the neighborhood hardware stores with national buying power. I'll take the special. How's that? Great! I like these the best. You got it. I always tell my customers, be sure to take your credit card receipts. I should have listened to myself. Whoa. Citibank for me? The other day I got a call from Citibank. Hello? Seen somebody charge some pretty fancy stuff on my card number. Citibank suspected fraud, but they said I wouldn't be responsible for the charges. I've seen Citibank look out for my customers. Seems they're also looking out for me. It's not just Visa. Citibank Visa. We've added the leading cough suppressant to the proven cold relief of Alka-Seltzer Plus to relieve your cold and cough at the same time. New Alka-Seltzer Plus cold and cough medicine in the purple box. Two kinds of relief. 
from only one medicine. The race is on to make batteries that last longer. And today's Duracell batteries can even outrun the ones we made just a few years ago. Today's Duracell. You can't top. The copper top. I have Denorex on this side. As soon as I put Denorex on my hair, I felt like the itch was going away. The tingle feels like it's taking away the dandruff. Denorex with conditioners, the dandruff shampoo you can feel working. I have no dandruff and I have no itch. You say your eyes are red, irritated, dry? Don't hide them. Help them with Clear Eyes. It gets rid of the redness and has an extra moisturizing ingredient, too. Clear Eyes. And for allergies and colds, Clear Eyes ACR. Richmond, Virginia is located 100 miles south of Washington, D.C. The city offers a wealth of culture and historical attractions along with first-class entertainment. Battles have been a big part of Richmond's history. This year, the city of Richmond, along with the Colonial Athletic Association, will host another battle of sorts. The CAA will salute 100 years of basketball with its annual conference tournament, Super Hoops 3 at the Richmond Coliseum. East Carolina, George Mason, UNC Wilmington, Richmond, James Madison, American, William & Mary, and Old Dominion Universities will all be competing to reach the Rich Food Colonial Basketball Finals on Monday, March the 9th. The past two years, the University of Richmond has come away victorious. The tournament winner gets an automatic bid to the NCAA basketball tournament. Make sure you watch the CAA's championship game on home team sports. That's coming up Monday, March the 9th, 7.30. Going to be a battle right to the end. Today's Pontiac 400 aerials are brought to you by Pennzoil Motor Oil. Beautiful shots of this great three-quarter mile facility. We're at the present time. We're... 19 laps into the event. Nary a caution to date with Bill Elliott out in front. Davey Allison running second. Sterling Marlin in third. Harry Gann in fourth. Kyle Petty back to fifth now. Hutt Strickland sixth. Alan Kowicki is seventh. There you see your leader. Car number 11, Bill Elliott, setting a very good pace, but not getting away from the 28 of Davey Allison. Now, Davey's able to stay right behind him right there. You know, Fords have led just about every lap this season in NASCAR competition, and it's just not so much one guy able to do it. They're all up there in the front running hard. And Bill's got about the same distance he's had in the last 10 or 12 laps. It's kind of stabilized right now, and Sterling's coming in on Davey a little bit. Dale Earnhardt has moved from 29th position in this race up into 20th. And here you see him closing in on Dale Jarrett in the 18. Actually, they've just moved the two of them around Ernie Irvin, so call that a battle now for the 19th position. Jarrett versus Earnhardt. Jared in the Joe Gibbs car, and number three here. Now, the last time that Earnhardt came from this far back, Neil, that was uh, 1984, the Daytona 500. He started uh, 29th in 84, and he wound up in second spot in that race. That was the one that Kelly Arborough won. Yep, and one time right here at this track, he wrecked a car in practice and totaled his car and had to start a new car and won the race from the rear. So it's not out of the question for that team to be able to come back to the front. And there's one guy that's really making a move also. Ricky Rudd started 27th, and he's up to 17th place right now. So as we're watching this, Ricky's really coming through the pack also. We talked to Ken Schrader about why Earnhardt is so successful here at Richmond. We're still trying to figure out how he won the five championships. You know, I mean, Dale and the whole Richard Childress team is just a real good team. And there's, there's certain tracks that everybody does better at, and obviously this is one of his good ones. So the thing that makes that team uh, so good, though, is their bad ones are just uh, just a 10th place card, you know? There he is, and he's now battling, as you see, Ken Schrader in the 25 car. He is in 14th position, and you see right behind him, Jeff Bodine, now carrying the number 15 callers, making a move on Schrader. Fight a little further up in the field here. That's for 14th spot. Schrader on the outside. And trying to nose down on the inside comes Bodine. Bodine made a lot of print this week out of his efforts up at Lake Placid on a bobsled. He finally found something that would scare him to death, he said. Yeah, he, you know, he wanted to go up there and try to drive the thing, but he said once he got there, he was really impressed with it. He's the first one to admit he couldn't drive one competitively. Well, but he, tr he tried to drive it, and you've got to give him an A for effort on that. Those things, just a couple of pieces of rope. And good night, nurse. That's pretty exciting stuff. This is exciting stuff here as Bill Elliott continues to show his stuff and strut around this three-quarter mile track. Dr. Dick Bergen has a report for us. 
perhaps for watching WTBS last fall for the Charlotte race, you saw that number 11 car win with Jeff Bodine behind the wheel. The car Elliott's driving today is the same car as well that won last weekend at Rockingham. But here's a cute little story about this thing. Every other Ford in the field has got the Ford Robert Yates corporate cylinder head, except this one. Junior said, I want my heads on this car. So although this car has a winning history, it's got a unique engine under the hood. Putting a lap on Wally Dolan back there. Here's Rick Benjamin. Yeah, we were watching the progress of Kyle Petty. At the top of the broadcast, we talked about how Kyle was hoping he could stay toward the front. He qualified well. Well, it's going much like last week. Kyle Petty is backing up. He started in the top five. He's back to 10th position here in the early going. We have completed 30 laps this time by. All green flag laps to date. As you see, Elliott beginning to disassemble the field, plowing his way up around some of the back markers. Here he is working on Jeff Buller, who's making his first Winston Cup appearance in that number 88 out of Auburn, Massachusetts. Kid that was second in the uh, modified standings a year ago. Well, I take in, we're sitting here watching Elliott run this deal, and he's really got the car hooked up. What we're in danger of right here, he's running so good, he's going to start lapping some really good race cars very soon. Back about a second, maybe a second and a half, is the Davy Allison car maintaining the second spot, but it's Bill Elliott in a class by himself for the moment, Neil. Just a minute ago, I was talking about Rudd moved up to 17. He's past these other guys. He's up in the 14th place. He's really marching to the front. He's making as aggressive a move as anyone on the racetrack right now. And remember that Rudd has come from well back in this field. Ricky Rudd in the car number five had started well back 27th when the thing got underway. Getting 32 laps notched here already and seeing Elliott just drawing away and trying to make this race look like Rockingham a week ago where he was, he took Dale Earnhardt's title, Dominator. You know, it, with it. It Mark, it, here's Mark Martin, we're looking out of his car. There's Dale Jarrett right in front of him. Dale was running good the first race, but he's slipping just a little bit now, we can see it. From uh, Mark Martin's car, let's take a look at the telemetry here and see what he pulls up for RPM. Him coming down to the corner. He's coming off the corner now. Down the main straightaway. Back to what? 70, 7,800. Gets it right up about eight grand there for a moment before he touches it off into turn one. I think I saw about 8,300 for just a minute. People wonder what kind of RPM we turn these cars. They don't turn that big RPM, but just for a split second, once you'll see a big number all of a sudden it'll disappear. See the front straightaway just turned 7,300 then. So it changes. Excuse me, that was a back straightaway 7,300. Well, and who says these short tracks aren't quick? Do you see that thing flash up to 131 miles an hour? There's 8,200 again going down in the first turn. There's about 200 RPM difference in the front and the back straightaway, and it's showing up right here. Yes, I just talked to Steve Neal talking about Mark Martin's car. They said he's just a little bit loose. They're going to try and jack around a wedge in the car, tighten it up for him on the next pit stop. He's running back in 20th position as you watch these pictures. Interesting stuff out of Mark Martin's car number six in Roush Racing. And there you see old Mark doing his trick. I'm sure right here they're telling Mark that Bill Elliott is less than a half a straightaway behind him. When you've got a car that's a little ill handling like Mark is, you just can't go any harder. You'll start going slower laps. So he's got to pace himself, hope for a caution, and not let Bill Elliott lap him. Trying to check out early here, Bill Elliott with the advantage over Davey Allison and the field. And he's putting it on everybody at this point. Moves around the number 55 of Ted Musgrave. Ted had a great race down at Daytona. Nice guy and a good team. That's a Jasper team. You know, Kent, just a little bit early, Randy was talking about the heads on that general on Junior Johnson. He developed a set of heads, and his is working very well for that car. Ernie Urban here, number four, is fading. He started 10th. As you look here, he's back in 22nd position and about to fall into the jaws of some others that want a shot at him here. The eight car pulling up, Dick Trickle on him. It's only a three seconds from being lapped at this point. And there goes Trickle looking for a shot. And off his feet today, the Morgan McClure car with Ernie Urban at the controls, number four. 
Ken, we're seeing some of the Chevrolet cars that usually are the front-running race cars. I'm not so sure that a lot of this pressure, this dominance by Ford, is making some of your established, well, front-running Chevrolets do things they normally don't do. When you're running up front, you don't change things. Taking right too now, many chances. They're having to try things that normally they wouldn't do to try to close that gap. Sometimes you make those chances, you back up instead of going forward. Oh, you see Richard Petty out here. Hey, how about this? Richard Petty is leading Dale Earnhardt in the point standings. He's tied for 11th. Your buddy Earnhardt's back in 13th. Well, I tell you, Richard Petty, this is his last year, and I'm sure everybody here would like to see him win some races and be right there in the points battle. And here comes the number 10 into the picture, right behind Richard Petty. You see the 10 of Derek Cope and Barry Dotson is again the crew chief on that number 10 here today. Yeah, Barry and them were trying to put their team back together, and while they're working on that, he's working with some of these other cars. Very knowledgeable with these chassis, and he's an asset to any team that he goes to. Richard Petty moving up for 21st spot, dropping back to number four. Been pretty good now. He's at two 16th place finishes back to back. Take a look at this as uh, Kyle Petty is on the outside. And old DW, number 17, down on the bottom. Can I tell you, just like with Kyle Petty's situation, it makes you start to question if you can run such a fast qualifying lap, you can't get that reliability for the race, and I'm sure they're scratching their heads now. Battle for 10th right there. Into 10th is Waltrip. In 11th is Kyle Petty, number 42, and that's Michael Waltrip, who had that sensational run at Daytona. I got to tell you, I thought one of the classiest things we saw in Daytona was was uh, Chuck Ryder after their car with eight laps to go looking for a top three finish. He was a real contender, blew up. Yeah, there's, that's a class act, that number 32. Bill Here's your leader, Bill Elliott, in the car number 11. And as he continues to draw away, we're following some of those battles further back in the pack. Interesting development just a little further back. Sterling Marlin is on the march. He's pulling around at number 22, and he has Davey Allison. As they come off that back straightaway, take a look at this. Car number 22, Sterling Marlin goes into second place. Interval first to second. This is Elliott back to Marlin now. Is two and eight-tenths seconds, Neil. And hey, we're only 44 laps into this thing. I'll tell you what, it's, it's crazy to see somebody be able to come up with something so strong. Here's the 22 car moving the inside of a lap car. Sterling's car is just like the one of Elliott's. They've got the same motor combination, and now he's coming to the front. Greg Sachs at number 41 gets pinned against the wall, and down to the inside comes the number 22, moving in on Chad Little in the Trop Arctic, number 66. The 22 of Sterling Marlin still looking for that first win. He seems star-crossed in Winston Cup racing. So close, five times, yet never a checker. And, and uh, Junior sure put a lot of confidence in Sterling and giving good race cars. And on any given day, they can win a race. They just haven't had the right things happen, and they will win. All green flag to date. 46 laps of it here, as Bill Elliott is showing the strength, the power, the might of that Junior Johnson racing team. One car in trouble, coming out of four, is number 18. He's sliding, picking it back up. But Dale Earn, uh, rather, uh, Dale Jarrett seems to have lost the handle a little on that Gibbs car. Completely sideways up off forward. When you do that, you pay the price for several laps. It'll take him a while to get it cooled back down where he can run with it. Rick Mast is in 23rd spot, and he's about to be overtaken and put down a lap by the leader, Bill Elliott, scorching this track, averaging 118 miles per hour. Ernie Irvin's just gone a lap down. Yeah, Bill just went around him, and that's one of the strong GM products just went a lap down. So there you see it. Bill Elliott showing his stuff. And they may be ringing the bell in Dawsonville again today, as well as the siren. James Bond weekend continues tonight. Take it to the limit with Roger Moore and boldly go where no spy has gone before. Moonraker, 7 Eastern tonight on TBS. Things are different. The all-new Grand Am Sports Sedan proves it. Things are better because inside and out, the Grand Am's equipped to perform. And it even gives you better mileage than a Accord or Camry for a whole lot less. In fact, Consumers Digest named the Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac's new Grand Am. A new kind of excitement. In here, Miss Rollins. Some patients' worst colds are at the end of the season. Good time to try this. Advil cold and sinus. 
It has two ingredients doctors like for colds. One for pain, another for congestion. Each has been recommended over 20 million times. And they're both right here, without a prescription. And not a moment too soon. Tough on colds like Advil is on pain. Advil cold and sinus. Advanced formula for the cold season. Head and shoulders for my serious dandruff? Uh-uh. Blue is better. Extra medicated Selsun Blue. With a medicine doctors recommend most. Medicine that relieves flaking better than head and shoulders. Blue is better. Selsun Blue. Doctor recommended number one. To pull her through a nasty lunch, Mylanta uses aluminum and magnesium. But his antacid is Tums. And Tums has calcium. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. The NBA on TNT. Four great teams, two nights, back to back. Oh, yes! Tuesday, the Lakers and Knicks at eight. Wednesday, the Celtics and Bulls at eight. The NBA on TNT. Bigger than life. Welcome back to Richmond, Virginia at Richmond International Raceway. The Pontiac Excitement 400 unfolding for you this afternoon. 53 laps completed so far. It's been a Bill Elliott show here this afternoon. One of the stories we'll be covering for you here at the STP Pit Communication Center, the True Value Hard Charger standings. True Value Hardware posts a special $1,500 in award money to the driver who leads the most laps. The top five score points. Oh, looking toward a season bonus of $50,000 in the Hard Charger standings. Here's where we are for the season to date. Davey Allison over Bill Elliott and Morgan Shepard. Harry Gann and Sterling Marlin, your top five. But, gentlemen, today, the way things are going, Bill Elliott may add substantially to his lead in these Hard Charger standings. One car just coming onto pit road and looks like he's in trouble as the number 26 here. You see Brett Bodine, who had been running in 10th, is back behind the wall with the Kenny Bernstein car. And the Quaker State folks looking that one over. It looks like they're working on the right rear axle on that car. They're pulling the axle flange off. Ken, this is leading into something these guys are doing to work on these rear ends with these... Not rear... just the motor. Out and back, they're fiddling with these forks. They're, they're playing with them. They're trying to get that uh, radial tire to work. They put a little bit of camber in the rear tire, and the turn it breaks the axles in them. It looks like it's what's happened. And, and, and this is reminiscent again of Daytona when, when, remember, he was out early. I think he only ran a dozen or so laps at Daytona before they went behind the wall. Here it's lap 55. They're pulling the axle flange off. Looks like they got another axle in their hand. That's not a very big job. The problem is getting the old axle out of there. They're right now trying to pull in there and pull it out, see if it's in two pieces. I think Dick Bergeron can give us some more insight on what they're doing out here and is creating these problems. Sure can, Ken. What they're doing is these radial tires like a little camber. They like to have the top tipped in. Well, that works out great, except for the fact that the axle doesn't mate well with the hub. That tends to break either the axle or the hub. Two manufacturers have come up with hubs that solve the problem, but NASCAR says they're illegal. Well, this team had one of those confiscated today. They didn't know it was illegal, but they sure found out when NASCAR took it away. The price, they've just broken an axle. There's a lot of guys out here that have bent their axle housings and who have their fingers crossed that this doesn't happen to them this afternoon. Neil? Ken, you know, these guys, to really make it simple, they're actually bending the top of that rear wheel in like you do in the front tire. The front tire lays over on a race car. There's no way to make the rear wheel lay over. They're just bending the housing and in turn making the axle flex. So you're at risk. Your re only way to cure that is just get a sloppy fit. Grind and weld and push a little bit and let the axle fit sloppy in there. In turn, sometimes it'll snap. And they found out it's faster, but it's not very reliable. Yeah, coming off a corner, I would imagine, if you're trying to light it up, that, that could really create a problem. But that's the story out here you see on, 20, on the 26 car. Here is your leader. We're showing 60 laps now complete. This is Elliot, once again, destroying, disseminating the field. He's well out in front, but there's a new man in second place. That is the 22 Sterling Marlin, who got by Davey Allison about 15, 20 laps back, and he's closed in. It was at 2.8. Now it's about two and a half seconds back to this number 22. Then you see Rick Nass running a lap down at this point in second spot. Who's in third? How about number 12? Hut Strickland is in third. Here he is. He has moved around his cousin, so to speak. And so, for that matter, has the number seven. Alan Kowicki has moved to fourth. That means that the man that started outside of the front row, Davy Allison, has fallen back into the clutches of fifth spot and Harry Gant. Here you see them. Gant closing in on Davy Allison. Ken, Randy Pemberton's down in the pits, and he has some more to add to us about the problem with the rear ends. 
Randy? Well, on top of the rear ends, a lot of these cars are having trouble with the, the uh, tires spinning coming off the corners. But believe it or not, I'm sitting in the 28 pits. They have eight brand new sets of tires sitting here. I talked to the tire man before the race on this car, and they were concerned about the right front tire. This is a Martinsville construction with a softer compound, and they were talking about tearing the right front edge on this tire during the race. And it's 60 laps in. No one has run this far in practice sessions. 60 laps on a set of tires. Well, I tell you, that's a bad feeling, too, to be out there not knowing the limit, how far you go. What dictates a pit stop on these cars is fuel mileage. They'll go 100 so miles, and you just hope the other parts of the car will make it. And when it gets to the point to where the tire is the first thing you have to change, the only way you find out, you run until something happens. Find out we may very shortly as we get up towards 70 laps, 65 now complete. And here's Elliott lapping the 28th, 20th car. That is number 68, Bobby Hamilton, now going one lap down. It has been flawlessly driven by all these great Winston Cup stars today. Elliott continues to command, dominate this race. Let's take a look at the telemetry as we follow this story. Look what's happening here in Mark Martin's Valvoline car number six. They're showing the car in fourth gear, which you never shift except on restarts. We saw it go up in the... Well, see, if you notice now, Mark just got lapped. He's not turning the kind of RPM he turned when we saw him just a few laps ago. He's looking at, we'll see, 75, 7,600, almost eight. We were looking at 8,200 while ago. The car's off the pace a little bit. He can't hold the throttle down as long as he did before, and he's starting to lose ground. He, he just got lapped a few laps ago by Bill Elliott, but he's still seeing pretty good mile per hour numbers, but the motor, he can't hold the throttle down as long as he needs to. Elliott is doing it all. He's his own rabbit, and he's his own hound out here today. He's leading this field, he's drawing away, and he's chasing the rest of the field right off the racetrack. Well, Junior Johnson's known to have some pretty good coon dogs that look like he's got a hound dog that's running today. I was about to say, let's hope they're not barking at the wrong tree, but I'll disregard okay. that, I'm sorry. Thank you. Elliot first, Marlon second, Hutt Strickland third, Alan Palicki in fourth, and look at this number 11 fly. Again, if you're just joining us, we're at Richmond International Raceway. It has been sold out for weeks. And right now, watching a command performance by Bill Elliott, who's flogging this car number 11, and no matter how hard he runs it, it just seems to stay with him. One thing that you can get involved in today at home, of course, is the Gillette Halfway Challenge. Give us a call now, 95 cents a call. It's a 1-900 number, 436-7000. You must be 18 to call. After halfway, one of our viewers will be selected. You'll be called back. If you can tell us the driver who is leading at halfway, you will win a Chevrolet Lumina Z34, a brand-new car. The driver who leads at halfway wins $10,000 in the Gillette Halfway Challenge. So far, gentlemen, Davey Ellison has won two of those Halfway Challenge prizes this year, but at the moment, he doesn't seem to be in contention. I'll tell you what, Bill Elliott stands a good chance of leading this thing himself if it keeps going green like it is. As they run green, he continues to pull away. It's going to take a caution or some pit stop for these other guys to correct their cars. Neil, take a look at this battle going on. This is 10th position. And there you see Ricky Rudd in the number five. And right behind him in 11th spot, DW, car number 17, Daryl Walter. Rudd, who won here in 84. Remember that Bud Moore ride only two weeks after that big crash down there in the Bush Clash at Daytona? You were in that show, weren't you? Ken, I won the Bush Clash that day, and I remember looking in the mirror, and I saw that thing end over in, and I came back around, and I saw Rudd car laying there, and I said, man, that, you know, just gives you a terrible feeling. And then the next terrible feeling was he kicked our tails up here at Richmond two weeks later, so I had two bad feelings in a row. <laughs> Here's Waltrip working on Rudd in the number five car, his old ride. His old mate, Waddell Wilson, he now with Jeff Hammond. Darrell Waltrip in the 17, looking very good here at this point. I walked through the garage this morning. Darrell was brought back in against the wall, talking to Lenny Pond, who hadn't seen in a long time. And I said, how's it going, Darrell? And he kind of gave that old wink. He said, we're ready. So he feels like he's really got the car in good shape for today. So much fun to come to Virginia and see some of the greats like Lenny Pond. His two sons are racing now. They had a little short track sportsman car they've been running this past year. And Lenny's here watching today. He certainly gave us some great moments in Winston Cup racing for a long time. In fact, he, uh, he, he beat, remember he beat Walter Bach, the Rookie of the Year, back in the early 70s? He's here today, Lenny Pond. Taking a look at this battle, it continues. Further back in the field, you are following the fight for 10th spot. Ricky Rudd and Darrell Walter right in him. And remember this, just behind them, from 29th position, 
is the car number three, Earnhardt, beginning to knock on the door. And you don't ever want to bet against that number three, do you? It just, you know, at times they'll get way behind and you'll say, well, they're out of it. They, they might be out of it, but they're still struggling to get back to the front. They've got it working a little bit better. This is car number 15. That is Jeff Bodine, and on the outside of him is Rusty Wallace. That is the 14th car, and that is 14th and 15th, about to get lapped at 77 laps. Do you believe it? Elliott is on a roll. Ken, what is so hard for me to believe about that? I sat there just like you did, just a clock, lap after lap after lap. Rusty Wallace was the strongest guy on the racetrack. Bill Elliott just driving away from him right now. You know, the, the knock on Elliott was always about the short tracks, and he was great on the super speedways. And that the kind of driver that Junior Johnson loved was Cale Yarborough, Bobby Allison, Neil Bonnet, even Harry Gant. Those kind of guys that will muscle a car, shove it in there. And that wasn't Elliott's style. But you give him, Elliott, a Junior Johnson ride here at Richmond, and look at this show. We're at 78 laps in. He is now lapping those cars up in 14th, 15th, 16th positions. This is incredible, the performance out of the uh, Budweiser car number 11 of Bill Elliott today. Hey, race fans, Budweiser asks, who won? February 23rd, 1986, Richmond, Virginia. With three laps to go, it comes down to a duel between Dale Earnhardt and Darrell Waltrip. Darrell had hit in the back of the pack most of the day. He made his move on the backstretch, and it looked like the race would be his. But was it? Here's a list to help you jog your memory. Alka-Seltzer Plus goes to the Arctic Circle, where the toughest colds live. The cold is miserable in this environment. Uh, Alka-Seltzer Plus takes care of the aches, the runny nose. It does the job. Alka-Seltzer Plus fights tough winter colds with a combination of ingredients you can't get anywhere else. Alka-Seltzer Plus has done exactly what I've needed it to do. If I don't go to work, kids go hungry. Alka-Seltzer Plus, tough medicine for tough winter colds. And for your tough sinus symptoms, try Alka-Seltzer Plus sinus allergy medicine. What does it take to be a mountain man? Let's see. A mountain man must be fearless, sure-footed, willing to answer the call of the wild. But most of all, a mountain man should be thirsty for a smooth bush beer or an easy drinking bush life. So, head for the mountains and see if you have what it takes to be a real mountain man. Man. Inside your smooth running engine is a torture chamber. And under these grueling conditions, only one leading motor oil in every grade meets the world's toughest requirements for viscosity breakdown. Castrol. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol. Why make things tougher on your engine? Castrol GTX. Engineered for today's smaller cars. Drag racing results on Castrol's NHRA now. Dial 1-900-468-NHRA. When the job is tough, you need the best. And when you need the best, you reach for channel lock. For the power. The precision. For just plain counting on, there's only one. Channel lock. Be sure you're getting genuine channel lock tools. Look for this trademark. If you guessed none of the above, you're right, because seconds after Darrell made his pass, he and Earnhardt tangled in turn three. The melee took out the top four cars. Kyle Petty, who was running fifth, suddenly found himself in first place. He followed the pace car home for his first career Winston Cup win. Who Won is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bug. Back to Richmond, Virginia, Richmond International Raceway. We are 85 laps into the Pontiac Excitement 400, and we're in the SDP Pit Communication Center to take a look at the top five of the standings as we've described. Bill Elliott just wearing out the field today from the pole. Sterling Marlin, Hutt Strickland, Alan Gawicki, and Davey Ellison trying to keep him in sight. A question for Neil Bonnet. Neil, when you've got a car as strong as Bill Elliott is today, do you think he's pushing too hard? Should he be a little more conservative at this stage of the race? 
Rick, if it was anyone other than Bill Elliott, I'd question that thought too. But Bill is a type driver that doesn't really abuse his equipment. Sometimes when a car is working as well as Elliott's is, he's running the easiest lap on the racetrack. He's not spinning the wheels, the motor's working good. He's probably putting out less effort than the guys trying to keep from getting laps. So Bill's the type of guy that really takes care of equipment and he's just driving away from it. He sure is. He's driving right around. Ken Schrader, a lap the 14th place car. This is on lap 88. You see Schrader in the 25 up on the high side, and here is Elliott continuing to make mincemeat out of this Winston Cup field. Now, among the cars that he has lapped of recent, he has lapped Jimmy Spencer just momentarily, just, just moments ago, and he has lapped Jeff Bodine, and he's lapped the guy who qualified third and we were just talking about, Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty has fallen under the power of Junior Johnson's number 11. Here's Dick Bergman. And I'm with Tim Brewer. He's crew chief for Bill Elliott. Tim, is he pushing that thing too hard too soon? I couldn't hear the question. Is he pushing too hard too soon? No. He's just riding right now. Just, just don't whatever. tell me there's still more in that thing. <laughs> well, I don't know. I hadn't talked to him. He uh, He's just riding the thing around right now, putting laps on the board. Uh, Sterling, he looks like he's in pretty good shape. Some of the other guys. This is just like watching in your living room. There is no excitement in this pit, no emotion. They're all just standing around with one foot on pit wall, calmly watching their car decimate the field. Here you see the number two car, Rusty Wallace, coming on pit road. Let's go down to Randy Pembert. Well, the Rusty Wallace came over the radio and said, guys, I need four tires. And yesterday's practice session, we saw Rusty run very well on brand new tires. But as we speculated today, how long can these cars go on tires? Well, today, Rusty Wallace has been falling off the pace. So simply said, they crank another round of wedge in the left side. Hopefully that will tighten it up for Rusty Wallace. Well, I'm sure right now they're ready to try anything because he was so quick yesterday, I'm sure they're shocked that the car fell off this bad. And four tires will certainly help him for a while, but it's not going to cure it unless he, he can something He came in and he was else. running the 19th. Look at this battle, Neil, for second position. There is car number 12. Strickland down on the inside, blasting underneath Sterling Marlin, taking over in second spot. And falling back is Alan Kowicki. He is now in that fourth position. It's Hutt Strickland in car number 12 who is on the roll. Hot Strickland pulling up in that Chevrolet and taking over in second position. Ken, I was going through the garage just when I walked over and talked to Bobby Allison. And I said, Bobby, how's things going? He said, let me tell you, man, we got the fastest Chevrolet here. The car is really running good, and they're looking for a good day, and it's happening right now. You know that Bobby Allison's a car owner. He's one here at Richmond. As a car owner. Yeah, back in 74. He's driving his own car. And, uh, I should know that. He I worked ended, on that car. Yeah, he he, he ended uh, Richard's seven race winning streak here. Good old days. Remember that? Wasn't that that number two car? Yeah, but I, at that time, I worked on them at the garage, and they'd load them up and leave home, and they'd go race, and I'd see them when they come back all bent up. So I didn't get to make all the trips. That was number 12. That yeah. was the number 12. And I remember, it won its first race up in Oxford, Maine. We had those little shops right there by Bobby's house. He cranked them out. He, he was jumping on the factory guys. Everybody was laughing, but he was able to wipe the smile off their face a couple of times. Now, well, here's Hut Strickland trying to wipe some smiles off some Ford faces today as he rolls that number 12 up into second. And I believe he's closing in. That interval has shrunk some between first and second position. We'll check it back for you as they come around here. Ken, this might be some of the writing on the wall. Hut Strickland is running a different type of silver head. He's running some of the new Chevrolet heads. This Ford is making these guys try some different things. You've got to close that gap. Just like Elliot sitting there driving away, the car of Strickland is trying a little bit different solar head. He seems to be the strongest Chevrolet. That might be the direction to go in. They put a lap on that Trop Arctic car, and at the interval, actually has grown some more. It's a little over three seconds now between first and second, by which Elliot leads. Strickland stays second. Sterling Marlin third. Alan Kowicki is in fourth. Bill Elliott dominating here. Is there anything tough about this track for Bill Elliott? You know, every now and then you get kind of caught off guard because going into turns, you know, coming off turn two is always a place you've got to pinch your car down. And going into turn three because you have to make such an abrupt turn and then you got to sweep the corner coming out. So, you know, but if your car's hooked up, it's regardless of what the track does, you know, you can pretty much handle the circumstances. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Well, Kenny Schrader, the latest casualty to Bill Elliott's speed out here on the track is in. Four tires, Kenny wanted. Oh, we got a blown engine on the front stretch. Jimmy Means. 
Smoker and caution for the first time today. That's at lap 99, just as we come to lap 100. Jimmy Means, he erupts in smoke. Glotz back, going by him on the inside. And Jimmy Means out of Alabama, car number 52. I understand the Statler brothers is somehow involved in that sponsorship, or else they own the building or something, that sponsor on the side of that car. Boy, I hope they're involved some way. Jimmy Means is a hard racer, and he's down to the point to where he doesn't have many more races he can run without some help. I'm glad to see some good sponsorship for him. Pace car has the field in tow. Remember, it's 40 miles an hour on pit road here today. We've now completed one-fourth of the distance in this 300-mile, 400-lap race. And we will be back with more from Richmond International Raceway and the Pontiac Excitement 400 after this. Racing. I can't explain it. You're kind of in a limbo zone. Time's different. Speed's different. Everything works different. It sounds totally cosmic. <laughs> it's out there somewhere. Kyle Petty and Mellow Yellow. There's nothing mellow about them. Your dream is sea breezes off Cape Cod. But it's sweat, not dreams, that's going to get you there. And you need a deodorant you can depend on. Old Spice deodorant actually helps stop odor before it starts by killing odor-causing bacteria on contact. 99%. That's odor prevention you can count on with the clean scent of Old Spice. Permission to come aboard? Old Spice deodorant. It does a number on odor-causing bacteria. 99%. Inside, your smooth-running engine is a torture chamber. And under these grueling conditions, only one leading motor oil in every grade meets the world's toughest requirements for viscosity breakdown. Castrol. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol. Why make things tougher on your engine? Castrol GTX. Engineered for today's smaller cars. Drag racing results on Castrol's NHRA now. Dial 1-900-468-NHRA. You say your eyes are red, irritated, dry? Don't hide them. Help them with Clear Eyes. It gets rid of the redness and has an extra moisturizing ingredient, too. Clear Eyes. And for allergies and colds, Clear Eyes ACR. To pull her through a nasty lunch, regular Rolaids uses an aluminum salt. But his antacid is Tums, and Tums has calcium. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. We're back with you again at Richmond International Raceway. It started out as a little half-mile track, and my, how it has grown. Three-quarters of a mile, 60,000 people in its day when it first was created. This was the old Strawberry Hill Raceway. Richard Petty said they must have harvested the crop just before we raced on it that first time. Man, it was rough. Pennzoil aerial team today, Billy Bates, giving us these great pictures of Richmond International Raceway, if you've never been here, come in September and see that night race. It's going to be a dandy. You know they're going to add another 8,000 seats to this place down in uh, turns one and two by the time we come back in September? I bet you they're already sold. Because <laughs> every time they build seats, there's already people ready to sit in. You know, Petty was talking about how rough this racetrack was. I wonder if everybody saw about how rough he's been on the competition. I think he's won 13 races That's at right. this place. That's right. 13 races he's won out here. He stayed out. He's been trying to make up a lap here. He's right behind the pace car at this time. And as we get ready to restart, we'll be at lap uh, 102 when they come by, 103 when they come by this time. Elliott secures that lead another time. Hut Strickland is in second, but Harry Gant is in third. Boy, saved by that caution flag. With, you know, it's a shame to see something like Jimmy Means had problem, but about four or five of the other guys were right on the verge of being left. Earnhardt was 4.2 seconds. Trickle was the next car. When that caution came out, it saved several of these guys going a lap down. From the Valvoline in-car camera of Mark Martin in number six, and that car has been off its speed today, well back in the standings, about 21st at this moment, getting ready for the restart, give you some pictures of how it goes around this three-quarter mile track. And now we're with Chad Little's car number 66. Chad, can, uh, can you spend a moment with us, Chad Little? Yeah, sure, Chad. I think we're going through this lap, but... Um... The car's just been tight on me coming out. It goes in good, and uh, it starts to turn in the middle, but then it gets real tight coming out of the corners, and 
So I just got to kind of baby the throttle coming out, and that's what these guys are getting me right now. But we'll keep working on it, and uh, hopefully we'll have a, have a good day by the time it's over. They're going to turn another lap under caution before they turn you loose out there today, Chad. Uh, did you just miss on the setup? Is this track changed after all this weather? What's the story? Well, you know, uh, Richmond kind of notorious for being a tight racetrack, and we thought we had it uh, loose enough at the last practice session, but obviously um, we just kind of misguessed it a little bit. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, fix it during the race with the little changes we can make uh, during the caution. Well, hopefully we can talk to you a bit later this afternoon. Thanks so much, Chad Little, and the Phillips 66 Trop Arctic Automobile. Chad Little, so easy to miss on a short track. I mean, there's just no forgive on this thing. When, you, when you're talking to Chad and he says he's got a little bit of push, he's not talking about something you can't turn the rear wheels, you know, the front wheels just keep sliding. He's talking about he can't use the throttle as he wants to. Just a little bit off, you pay a big price. Ready for a restart. Pace car coming in. We'll get a green at lap 106. The lineup has Elliott, Strickland, Gant, Davey Allison, Sterling Marlin, Alan Kowicki, Michael Waltrip, Ricky Rudd lined up on the outside, rounding out the top ten. Earnhardt is in tonight. Darrell Waltrip is the tenth man as they get that green and go for it another time here at Richmond. Hutt Strickland had to work a lot of traffic to get into second position. He's right behind Bill Elliott. Now let's see if Hutt has anything for Bill. First caution of the day. Just being completed after Jimmy Means blew an engine from lap 101 to 106 under caution. To the strike. And Elliott says, see you later. Here's Harry Gann, the number 33. Putting another lap on Richard Petty. And there is the number two car, which we thought was so stout after yesterday's last qualifying period. The happy hour, there wasn't anything faster than that number two car. I wonder if they over-massaged. Well, they worked on it a lot. While we're talking about that two car, we brought up the question earlier about tire wear. That was the ultimate test right at 100 miles. Let's go down to Randy Pemberton and see what he found out about tire wear. I talked to Todd Parrott. He's the engineer on these tires down here in the pits. He said there are absolutely no blisters. There are no markings uh, of any sort that would cause them of concern. Rusty said the car is simply loose. The tires are fine. Take a look at number 22 here, just skirting down to the inside. And here's Gant in the 33, also making his move for second spot. Harry Gant on the bottom. Mr. September coming out here as the March Hare in car number 33 and getting around Hutt Strickland in the 12. Ah, Harry tasted victory yesterday, and it tasted good. Here comes the bandit, Harry Gant in number 33. Remember the 15 is a lap car. The Buttmore number 15, Jeff Bodine, running one lap down to the leader, Bill Elliott, and about to go a lap down to Harry Gant as they come out of turn two. Gant to the inside, making the move. He makes his pass, in to give him a clear run at Elliott. We'll see if, if Harry can close that gap a little bit. Now you see the Davy Allison car back in third spot. Hot Strickland in fourth. Now they retrieved whatever the problem was on that 28 car, and Robert Yates... Larry McReynolds had put Davey Allison right back in the hunt. Ken, we've already seen that motor-wise, Davey can match virtually anything on the racetrack. Chassis-wise, when they get it right, he goes to the front. They might have the chassis better. He's coming back. And as we say coming back, he's driving right under uh, Jeff Budine and pulling right up behind Harry again. Hey, Neil, consider this. 1992 Ford lap sled, 753 Chevy. Seven. That's hard to believe. Isn't that it's remarkable? As close as the competition has been in years past in Winston Cup. Here's Davey trying to get under Harry again. It's just hard to imagine that the Chevrolet's been shut out as much as they have. Davey Allison grinds out another spot here in our live coverage today from Richmond International Raceway in the Pontiac Excitement 400. Harry Gant stays right in there, but now he's looking up from third spot. He comes to second, falls back one. Elliott's still in front. Allison now second. Gant is in third. Sterling Marlin is in fourth, and Hutt Strickland is in fifth. Neil, you made a fair amount of money racing, but two races into the year, and Davey Allison's made, what, $370,000, $320,000, something like that. Two races in the year. Man, I tell you, it's unbelievable, but the sport is growing so much. That Daytona, when you win Daytona, the Super Bowl stuff starts going your direction. And when he got that one behind him now, it's just kind of downhill and just breaks it in the rest of the year. You know what I like about Davey Allison is after he won the Daytona 500 this year, and they were still talking about the great finishes, he said, my biggest thrill 
was still to finish in second behind my dad in 1988 when father and son came across one and two. I Not a bad kid at all. I remember doing that myself a few times with Bobby and finishing second to him and it's just like winning the race. The days like that that happened at Daytona with him first and second, nobody lose. There's nobody that loses a, a finish like that and boy, I tell you, it's going to stick with Davey for a long time. For Davey Allison, how has life been after winning the Daytona 500? It's been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I never really realized what kind of recognition and what kind of attention came along with it. But, you know, I got to say, the fans out there have been great. The, the family's been great. But there have been a lot of demands on my time since then. I bet there have been some demands. Yeah, but it's nice demands. When they want to see you, that's a lot of fun. Changes your life around a little. Darrell Waltrip said he thought after he won all those championships, those three Winston Cup titles, hey, what could be better? Then he won the Daytona 500. He said it was another dimension, just another whole world when you win that race. It's a pretty strong guy saying that when you talk about Walter being impressed with winning Daytona. Well, that was back a few. Right now it's 92, and here's the story. It's Ford's trying to pace themselves out in front, first and second. And guess what? Davey Allison is closing, closing on Bill Elliott. Well, Tim Brewer just told us a while ago Bill Elliott was just riding around. Davey's going to make him see how much he wants to ride and how much he wants to race because he's closing it up. The iron fist grip that Elliott has had on this race may be getting just a little shaky now. Here comes Davey. He's got a better line on the bottom out of three and four. You know, if you take a look at the standings, the Napa standings after 110 laps, Excuse me. Dave. That's right, Ken. We were just talking before about Davy's car running, but getting the handle back on it. He's in the bottom of the racetrack. He, he couldn't do that earlier. Now he's in the bottom, and he's able to make up some ground on Bill. Going down this corner, Bill's been sliding out. Davy's been sticking it down on the bottom and staying there. There he is, right in the bottom of the racetrack. For first place, back to the line. Just at lap 121. Ah. There's nothing like the thunder of Winston Cup cars, and what a grand battle. Davey Allison from Alabama, and George's pride, the great Bill Elliott, going out of here at Richmond this afternoon. Here's Allison nipping along on the bottom of the track, just getting a look at that lead, and back comes Elliott another time. Ken, this is the best shot he's had. If he's beside him right here, they'll go down in this corner. If he can just equal him up this back straight, Forget which is it. hard to do. Oh, gentle Bill is on the outside, working just as well out there as Davey does on the inside. And they have a lot of empty space in front of them. It is a straightaway to the next car. Elliott again showing the strength of the Junior Johnson car on the outside. Back again comes Davey. This is where everybody says, why do you race this hard early in a race? Because these are two racers. You can't tell these guys just to sit back and ride. One of the other guys thinks they can lead and they're not going to give it up. Bonus points here, folks. Bonus points for leading a lap. Back to the line they come. Squeezing him up a little is Davy Allison. Does not intimidate Bill Elliott. Allison's added those five bonus points for getting that lead. And here goes Elliott right back on the outside. And he draws away in this incredible duel. They better look over their shoulder. When they start doing this, Harry Gant is probably the happiest guy in town. He said, race side by side. I'm coming. <laughs> Harry's closing in on him. He's pulling for Davey, then he's pulling for Bill. He just wants them to mix it up. He's on the way. There you see the two leaders, and how far back is Harry Gant? There's the number 33, and there you'll see the interval. There's the second-place car, and just in front of him, Bill Elliott. That's the picture. That's the story of the race at lap 125. Elliott first, Ford. Allison Ford second. Gant, Oldsmobile third. Sterling Marlin, Ford fourth. And then it's the Hutt Strickland Chevrolet in fifth. Alan Kowicki is sixth. Ricky Rudd is in seventh. Michael Waltrip in eighth. Darrell Waltrip in ninth. Earnhardt is tenth. Terry Labonte is back there in eleventh position. Harry Gant in the number 33 trying to close in. And we're checking a little interval here to see how close they're getting between second and third. Also moving back up is Sterling Marlin in 22. You know, that little move that Davey tried to make while ago. Here's Gant closing in on him. But when Davey tried to get around Bill a while ago, it's almost one of those either do it or die situations. He didn't make it. He used up a lot of tire on that race car, running that inside lane, pinching the car down. And now he's actually losing a little ground to Bill. It cost him to try it. It did indeed. One and three-tenths seconds. Interval between 
second and third spot, Davey Allison and Harry Gant. Laps complete, 128 here at Richmond International Raceway as Bill Elliott continues to make Richmond home territory for the Junior Johnson Ford. Ride with the Throttle Man, swim with sea lions of the Galapagos, and blast off from the jungle. Your ticket to adventure is waiting on Explorer. 9.30 Eastern, tonight on TBS. Today, performance cars come in a variety of designs, sizes, and even prices. So do Goodyear Eagles, the world's most successful line of performance tires. There are all-season Goodyear Eagles. New ultra-performance Goodyear Eagles. There are Goodyear Eagles for the classic and for the contemporary. No matter what performance car you own, there's a Goodyear Eagle priced for you. It's another reason we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. Inside, your smooth-running engine is a torture chamber. And under these grueling conditions, only one leading motor oil in every grade meets the world's toughest requirements for viscosity breakdown. Castrol. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol. Why make things tougher on your engine? Castrol GTX. Engineered for today's smaller cars. Drag racing results on Castrol's NHRA now. Dial 1-900-468-NHRA. Super Tuesday. With 11 states and nearly one-fifth of the delegates up for grabs, it could dramatically alter the race for the White House. For the most complete coverage of Super Tuesday, turn to CNN. Hey, Dave, you ought to bring back that chicken cordon bleu sandwich. It's great. Thanks. We're thinking about it. Dave, oh. uh, your chicken cordon bleu. Oh, oh. magnifique. Thanks. You'll bring it back. Right. Oh, oh, toujours, Thanks. Dave. <laughs> it's back. Wendy's chicken cordon bleu, a whole chicken breast, ham, Swiss, gray poupon, Dijon mustard, and mayonnaise on a toasted Kaiser bun. There's nothing else like it. Hey, Dave. I know. Chicken cordon bleu. That's great, Dave, but you still need a quart of oil. They're in search of a new record at 105.8 miles per hour. Bill Elliott is leading. The old record is 105.3. We've completed 134 laps, and it's been the Bill Elliott story here today. With some of the other stories that are going on in motorsports, let's join Rick Benjamin at the Goodyear Eagle Update Center. Thank you, Ken. Time for our first Goodyear Eagle Racing update of the day. You know, today's Pontiac Excitement 400 is not the only racing action of the weekend here at Richmond International Raceway. Yesterday, some 40 Bush Grand National drivers took to this three-quarter mile D-shaped oval for the Hardee's 200. The victory went to a driver who'd had trouble just making the field for the first Grand National race of the year at Daytona a few weeks ago, and who was making his first start of the season in that series. Now, yesterday, a full field of uh, Bush drivers, along with some drivers from the Bush Grand National North Series, and a uh, couple of Winston Cupers took the green flag on a clearing afternoon. Second year star Jeff Gordon had put his Ford on the pole, the white number one you see there. 1990 series champ Chuck Bound on the outside. Gordon faded at the start. Bound led early. He had his hands full with defending series champ Bobby Labonte. Finally, Labonte grabbed the lead about 20 laps into the race. In the race's next stage, pole sitter Gordon was able to gather himself and make it a three-way battle, but around halfway, a familiar name clawed his way into contention. 54-year-old Harry Gant in the Mac Tools number seven here, picking up where he left off last September in Richmond. Finally, Gant able to get the lead by working his way inside Bobby Labonte down in turn one. After that, it was all Gant. Harry set sail, opening up a five-second lead. The race winding down. Great duel for second in the last ten laps. Bobby Labonte on the inside, Kenny Wallace on the outside. Wallace nipping second spot at the checkered flag by a radiator cap. Harry Gant managing his first victory of 1992 in the Bush Grand National Series. And it was this series which really got him going toward that unbelievable September run he put together both in Bush Racing and in the Winston Cup. We take a look at the top five from yesterday's event. Gant the winner over Kenny Wallace and Bobby Labonte. Darrell Waltrip with a great run yesterday. And Joe Nemechek finishing in fifth spot. Darrell Waltrip hoping to use yesterday's run along with Harry Gant to a good run here today as we watch Gant work toward the front of the field. Gant working on Davy Allison, Rick, with 140 laps complete this time. Battle for second. It's Davy Allison there. And Harry Gant trying to do the takeaway. Here they are in turns three and four at Richmond International Raceway. Good slugfest. Yeah, this is what Davy got to do while ago trying to pass Bill. We've seen Harry Gant drive up under Davy, but not able to use the throttle like he want to to go on by. And you can catch a guy here 
but it's another thing trying to pass him. When you get it down on the inside that racetrack, you really smoke the rear tires. We saw Gant hang the rear out trying to get off that corner. It's tough on that bottom getting back in the throttle. As we see Davey Allison trying to fight to hang out to second, about 18 laps ago, he came over the radio and said, I want to lead this race and pick up five bonus points. He did that, so he had enough car to do that. Crew chief Larry McReynolds said back to him, when you get that five, stay in second place and just ride, save those tires. Well, it, winning those points makes, makes a lot of difference. And, you know, we saw Davey put a lot of heat on him up there for the lead, and he didn't actually lead all the way around, but he nosed him out the start-finish line, and that's all it takes. Just cross that line in the lead, and you get five points. Davey Allison, who are you concerned with in this race? Well, the guys that really looked strong in practice yesterday were uh, Bill Elliott and Harry Gant. And also, Hutch Strickland ran strong and uh, Brett Bodine. So we'll just have to see how things even out in the race. Uh, you know, if we can get out there and lead the thing early, set a fast pace, try to get some of these guys a lap down if we can. If not, if it looks like we're punishing the car too hard, then we'll back off and take care of it. But those are the guys to be concerned about. Ken, do you think Davey Allison had vision looking into the future? <laughs> because he couldn't have hit it any better. He's got one guy in front of him, one behind him. And Hutch Strickland's running good, too. So he hit the nail on the head on who's going to run right today. Well, basically, it's those four. But, but Strickland's performance. Sooner or later, this guy's got to get it nailed down and get himself a win. Speaking of getting it nailed down, Gant is nailing the throttle down. He's trying to get around Davey now. We've just received word, gentlemen, that the 33 car is experiencing perhaps a problem. The oil temperature in the car is rising. Now, Harry is right in behind Davey Allison. Maybe he's not getting as much air in the radiator of that car as he would like to, but that could indicate a problem, Neil. I tell you what, when you run a car as hard as Harry is, he's trying to get around him. They pull a lot of gear. We were talking to the garage this morning that turned an extreme amount of RPM. We saw the Ford a while ago. Gant's got a lot more gear in his car, and he's turning RPM. And when you stay behind someone like that, you're just, it's like a pressure cooker. He's putting a lot of heat on it, and uh, if he keeps it up, the thing could go away on him. Leading Chevy in this race right now is back in sixth spot. Ricky Rudd, car number five. You know, Neil, a Chevrolet has not led a Winston Cup race since that very first pit stop that we saw down at the tunnel. That's incredible. It's incredible. I'll tell you what, I, uh, you know, we've always seen fast cars, but usually they swap it back and forth between General Motors and Ford. Ford has had total domination, and I don't know what they're going to do without some major work to close that gap. There's that battle for second as it stays there now, and Elliott continues to draw away. You see the new average speed at 106.421. They're over the record. We could have the fastest Pontiac Excitement 400 in history being unwound in front of us today. And as this race continues to unravel, Bill Elliott looks like he's on his way to stitching up his 36th Winston Cup victory. Remember Bill Elliott when he first came out, he said, when we started racing, we had no idea what we were getting into. We're just a bunch of boys in the mountains in Georgia trying to make the race. He used to say, just please God, let us get in the field. And today, ah, look at this move by Gannon, 33. Gets himself a spot. Bill Elliott is dominating. He has a Pretty good lead on these two who continue their own personal war for second spot. Gandon Allison in a rip snorter here. This is for second. Davey Allison on the inside. Harry Gant right there in the 33. Ran out of room coming off two. Other Gant was on the outside and he ran out of room and had to roll back in the gas, out of the gas, get back in behind Davey. And that leader, Elliott, and that lead is building once again between first and second spot. Give you an idea of just how much of an advantage Elliott has put down since that one caution that ended at lap 106. We're at lap 149, and the difference is almost two seconds, 1.94. Well, General Motors is taking this Ford domination very seriously. So seriously that they called representatives of all of their teams from all of the GM makes together yesterday morning for a 7 a.m. meeting. Kurt Fischel, who runs all of the motorsports in General Motors, basically told the teams, guys, let's get together and run the new cylinder head that we have developed and the other pieces that we've got. Let's get going. Let's all pull together. They are very concerned about what Ford is doing. Nonetheless, most of the top GM teams here today are not running the corporate cylinder head. They have gone with the Pontiac head. 
Ken, one problem there, when you talk to these teams, they're saying, hey, let's go to the new cylinder head. How do you tell a team to park $100,000 worth of heads? They've got endless work, endless amounts of money put into the stuff that's on the shelf. And to develop that new head mid-season, they've got work ahead of them. They want to use what they got in working the off-season, but they don't have that luxury. You know, there was a lot of sharing among the courts. Remember, Robert Yates seemed to have it all handled, and everybody got quick. Dale Jarrett won at Michigan, and, and all of a sudden, those boards really came on at the end of the year. But from the other side, from the Chevy side, we're seeing something different with the Allison car out here today. A little experimenting going on there. Yeah, they're trying some new heads, and it looks like it might be the right direction. And certainly Junior is. Spoke of some oil temperature, oil temperature going up on the Harry Gant car. Harry came over and talked to crew chief uh, Andy Petrie. He said, it's simply getting a little warm. I asked Andy about the problem. He said, it always runs warm here at Richmond. No concern down here. Well, here we go for second spot again. We got a couple of pretty good wars on out here right now, but this one for second place. We'll hang in here for a minute and watch Harry Gant. The bandit and Davey and look at Harry just move that line up a little down here. Again, you know, you get out in the corner right here and you can stick the front of the car down there, but you can't match the gas. The rear wheels want to break loose. The front of drive in, it'll stick, but the mini has to use the throttle. He snaps the rear back out in front of the car. Watch right here. He gets in the gas. He just can't use full throttle and Davey's able to drive away from it. Watching this great battle, this is a gentleman who knows his track well and has had a lot of great battles himself. Let's go to the STP Pit Center. Ken, we're pleased to welcome Bobby Allison, former Winston Cup champion, Daytona 500 winner, here to the STP Pit Center. Bobby, you've got to be awfully proud. Your son, Davey, doing very well today. Yeah, Davey has done a really nice job. Uh, he had a good run at Daytona, you know, and a good run again last week. Running good again today. Hope he has a good one. Was it a special feeling for you to see him win the Daytona 500 for the first time? Well, I did really enjoy that. It was special, yeah. Let's talk about your car, the 12th car. Maybe we can get a shot of it. Hunt Strickland got up to second spot earlier. What makes you the strongest Chevrolet in the field today? Well, the guys have really worked hard on that Ray Besta Chevy for us, and, and Hutch worked hard behind the wheel. Got up there pretty good. We kind of lost a little bit of the handling on the, on the pit stop, uh, but he, he had begun to level out. When I walked up here, hopefully he'll move back up. He's taking it easy here as we work toward the midpoint of the race. What about your career aspirations? There was a story a few weeks ago that you were hoping to make a driving comeback. How does that stand? Well, I really hope that I recover to the point that I feel like I could. That still doesn't mean that I will. I went to Vanderbilt a couple weeks ago. I feel like they really helped me, and I'm going back uh, this coming Thursday. Hopefully, uh, I can get that a little bit better. I'd really like to get my aviation physical for now, but I'd really like to be where I could get back in the car. 84 Winston Cup victories for Bobby Allison. Some claim it's 83. I still think that Mustang should be counted for 84. And here is Harry Gant. Now, look at this battle. This 7 and 22 scrap has been going on. This is fourth place. And look at Ricky Rudd moving into it. There you see the 22, Marlon on the outside, Alan Kowicki pacing himself nicely, staying right there. And now they're all in a cluster. As they come out of the corner, this battle has become six strong. Six cars are involved in this dice. In the, in the nose of the battle, you see 7 and 22. There's Ricky Rudd on the outside. Then look back just a little further. And there you find Strickland in that car number 12. That's the Davy Allison car right there on the outside. There's Daryl Waltrip on the 17, Michael Waltrip on the 30. That's all in a bundle, and that's all from the fourth position back. Great scrap. Well, I tell you, they got him wanted up in a pack here. Daryl was the guy that's been I've been watching all day long. He's the one that's able to run the lowest line, not abuse the tires around the bottom of the racetrack, and it should come to him as well as anybody on the racetrack. Watch him. He works this bottom line. He goes in there. The car sticks. Watch how low he runs up off the corner. He's not abusing the tires very hard at all. If he can keep that line, he wouldn't move to the front. We neglected to tell the folks that that Kenny Bernstein car came back after 12 minutes, 38 seconds on pit road. He'd lost 32 laps, but Brett came back out. They're still trying. Now take a look at this. As Waltrip goes around the number 88, the freshman driver in his first appearance here, Fuller, and here comes Sterling Marlin right with him. What a thrill this must be for Jeff Fuller. Kid has been running up in the Northeast, running on the circuit, getting a cut at Winston Cup and driving well. 
doing exactly what they told him in the rookie meetings. He's staying out of the way, and that's so important when things happen so quickly at a track like Richmond International Raceway, where Bill Elliott continues to draw away from the field. It's never been un-American to buy an imported performance sedan. But now, it's unnecessary. The new Pontiac SSEI offers you handcrafted luxury, unsurpassed security, and supercharged performance at a price many thousands less than the big sedans from BMW and Lexus. The new Pontiac SSEI. A higher level of excitement. We got a problem. Any ideas? I've got a contact, sir. Well, get on it then. Get him here now. With years of training, Napa Auto Care technicians provide a secret service everyone should know about. Inside, your smooth-running engine is a torture chamber. And under these grueling conditions, only one leading motor oil in every grade meets the world's toughest requirements for viscosity breakdown. Castrol. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol. Why make things tougher on your engine? Castrol GTX, engineered for today's smaller cars. Drag racing results on Castrol's NHRA now. Dial 1-900-468-NHRA. Every second of an asthma attack can feel like an eternity. That's why there's Primatine Mist. Primatine opens clogged breathing tubes in as fast as 15 seconds. Primatine Mist, the fastest type relief known. First Contact wrote the book on cold medicine. And now a new chapter, Contact Day and Night. Day caplets for non-drowsy cold relief. Night caplets to relieve your symptoms to let you rest. New contact day and night. A whole new chapter in cold relief. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by the following. Goodyear, number one in racing and makers of Goodyear Eagles, the most successful line of high-performance tires in the world. And by First Brands Corporation, maker of STP racing products. And by Valvoline. People who know, use Valvoline. And by True Value. Give your home beautiful protection with long-lasting True Test Weatherall house paint exclusively from True Value hardware stores and home centers. Welcome back to Richmond International Raceway. The Pontiac Excitement 400 unfolding. Bill Elliott still wearing out the field. Working toward the 175 lap mark. Elliott's led from the pole all the way except for one lap. Time for you to get into the Gillette Halfway Challenge today. The phone number, 1-900-436-7095 sets a call. You must be 18 years of age or older. Call before halfway. If you're the entrant who is called back in the second half of the race and you know the driver leading at halfway, you'll win a Chevrolet Lumina Z34, a brand new one. The driver leading at halfway wins $10,000. Davey Allison has won this the first two races of the year, but today, gentlemen, it looks as though Bill Elliott's going to uh, pretty much ease to that $10,000 check. What do you think? Well, it's still a ways to go. He's just put a second lap on Ernie Irvin, running an 18th spot out there, Rick. But uh, And now he's moved in on the number 49. That is the Smith car out of Alabama, that interstate car. It's got a new sponsor this year. The guy that brought interstate in is now over at Joe Gibbs. There's that interval between the 11 car and 33. Well, I'll tell you, Elliott is on a rail. Boy, that's, a, yeah, that's an interesting interval there, but the interval is getting exciting. Look right in front of Bill Elliott. There's Elliott in the middle of the corner. Rick Mass, there's Earnhardt and Dick Trickle fixing to go a lap down right in front of him. And Earnhardt is in 12th place, and he's about to go a lap down at lap 175. You talk about decimating a field. You know, Trickle's car, Ken, was as fast as anybody in practice yesterday. Looks like they're off a little bit. Here he's lapping two really good race cars. You know, you talk about this and how uh, Ford is doing all of this, but let, let's not forget, Neil, what's, what's been going on here. You know, the, the GM cars have dominated for a lot of, lot of 1991, a, a year back. They won the first nine Winston Cup races in 1990. GM won uh, 12 of the first 15. In 89, they won the first eight Winston Cup races. So... I mean, you got to go back to uh, 86 when Jeff Bodine won the 500 when they split it up. Take a look here. There's the one realizing Rick Mast up on the outside and number three Earnhardt right in front of him. 
that they're about to go a lap down. Neil, a question for you from the SCP Communications Center. One of the strengths most people think NASCAR racing has is the equality of the competition. NASCAR's been noted over the years for tinkering a little bit with the rules if one brand of car seemed to be stronger than the other. What do you think? Are they going to make some rules changes here to try to level the playing field a little? Well, I'll tell you one thing about a NASCAR rule book. It's got all kind of pages and all kind of numbers, but right at the end it says to be changed at any moment. And if they said they're going to look at this thing and reevaluate after Atlanta. So I'm... You know, I'm sure they'll be looking at what to do, and I don't know if there will be any change or not, but the door is open to make a change. Remember the old rule book, E-I-R-I, except in rare instances. And this <laughs> could be very rare. <laughs> We're down to 179 laps complete. Elliott's on his way toward a new record at Richmond. Earnhardt has not led a single lap this year. Here is Rick Mast about to be lapped in one of the Jackson Brother cars, and here comes Bill Elliott about to put it on Earnhardt. Now, for you folks keeping track, this will be lap 180 when they come around. If he's going to go a lap down under full green conditions here. Boy, how long has it been since Earnhardt's been lapped? It's been a lot of time uh, since he's got this far behind. Long time. Well, he actually got lapped a, a, a week ago at the Rock. Well, don't remind me. I just couldn't remember very well, can I? <laughs> but this early at Richmond, I tell you. Here's Dick Berger. Craig Sachs has pulled behind the wall. The crew members are working on the engine of his number 41 automobile. He had been smoking. The problem, a bad valve cover gasket. They're going to take the valve cover off, put a new gasket on. Sachs will rejoin the fray, but he is going to be many laps down with no chance for a good finish this afternoon. Number 41 car back behind the wall. Greg Sachs won that single race at Daytona. You know, somebody always ends up, remember that in, when you were reading it and you were a kid and it was Fireball and those Pontiacs and they just couldn't be beaten. Remember that? Yeah, then it was the, I remember the old Hudson Hornet that oh. talked about that. Well, you're to, much older than I. The Plymouths and the Chryslers, they say it goes in cycles. Well, this is, we're in the Ford cycle right now for sure. It's been a long time, but it seems to be happening here in 1992. Ford's coming alive, and they've won the first two. Will they win the third? Harry Gant has other opinions. The telemetry giving you this idea of the race on this three-quarter mile track. Mark Martin and the Valvoline Ford providing the same. See the little bit of brake. Watch as he goes down the corner. You see the RPM on the right. Watch on the left side. You'll see just a little bit of brake pedal getting down in the corner. Well, that's, that right there is an indication the car's not handling properly. He's a little bit more brake than he wants to have to use real close to that wall off four there. You can see him almost clip the wall. Remember that he's riding back in 20th spot, so this team is off its speed today. When a car is working really well here, Ken, you can go in there and just glide the car in and use a small amount of brake in the corner. And when it's off, you have to ride the brake a little more. And from these pictures, let's tell the folks a little bit about how different the two ends of the tracks are. It's a totally different approach. Yeah, there, there they are coming off from turn four down the front straight. Look what a big wide bow you have here. Watch how wide the entry is into this corner. Looks like you could drive four tractor trailers down in here. You come in, you watch the car in front of him. Now you're right on the bottom, on the bottom. You come up here, all of a sudden the wall just jumps out. Look how quick the wall's out, long straight away. No bow in it. Right there is the part that's hard to get in. It's two totally different racetracks on each end. I just talked I just talked with crew chief Steve Neal of Mark Martin Steve. He had a smile on his face, but he had to force it. He said on the next pit stop, whether it's green flag or caution, they're gonna put a rubber in the right front spring and one in the left rear. That will hopefully stiffen it up in the right front. And uh, he said the car is just simply bad, bad loose. Sounds like they missed big time. And that is bad, bad news when you have to do that much work. One rubber and one spring is a major change. If they're gonna work on two of them, they're out of left field and they're ready to try anything. They need a caution. 187 laps are now complete of the 400 to be run. And the interval, Neil, that interval is closing down. Gant is trying to stop this Ford parade. Harry Gant is moving in. Meanwhile, you see the uh, 12th place car, Morgan Shepard, second currently in Winston Cup points. He's going to lap down to Elliott. I tell you, the Sitco car has ran well all season long. And for uh, Bill to be lapping him early is just an indication of how tough he's running today. But Gantz, the man, Harry Gantz, closing in, crowding that leader a little, keeps on nipping away a few car lengths every lap. And that's, of course, what he did all of the end of last year in that amazing run, those five victories he pulled off. 
he, he is something. He's the guy we need to be able to call on the radio because right now with him closing in on Bill Elliott, I promise you, Harry said, boy, this darn old thing just ain't running good and it ain't turning and it ain't driving, but yet he's going to the front. He, he usually complains about the car, but he always gets it to the front. There you see it, Harry Gant getting closer. Can he overtake that Ford? We'll see here in Richmond this afternoon. 190 complete. You see them everywhere, every day. They're watching us, spying on us, making sure that we behave. Now, they're taking charge. TBS presents a week of terrifying tales that will make your skin crawl. Day of the Animals, The Savage Bees, Empire of the Ants, Tarantulas, The Uncanny. They will kill every living thing in sight. It's a week of killer creatures. 105 Eastern beginning Monday on TBS. projection screen is so big you'll feel like part of the show when you watch the RCA home theater it also has Dolby surround sound that's so real Stand back, everyone. you'll forget you're sitting at home let me handle this the RCA home theater also has picks in picks it lets you watch two things at once in color another way RCA is changing entertainment again if I want to keep playing baseball, I'm going to have to keep working. There's no off-season anymore. And when I get sore, I take Advil. To last, you stick with what works. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Monday and Tuesday night, it's sky-high suspense with three great action-packed disaster epics. Airport, Airport 75, and Airport 77. It all begins at 8.05 Eastern, Monday night on TBS. The Pontiac Excitement 400 is brought to you by Mellow Yellow and Kyle Petty. There's nothing mellow about them. Welcome back to Richmond International Raceway, the Pontiac Excitement 400 at lap 196. Still a Bill Elliott show today. He's led all but one lap. Getting close to the Gillette halfway point today, the halfway challenge. You still have time to enter. 95 cents per call. Here's the 900 number, 1-900-436-7000. You must be 18 years of age or over to enter. Call now. Get your entry filed. When we see who's leading at halfway, we'll call back one of the entrants in the second half of the race. If you can tell us the driver out front at the halfway point at 200 laps, you'll win a brand-new 1992 Chevrolet Lumina Z34. $10,000 on the line for the driver who leads it halfway. And gentlemen, it certainly looks as though Bill Elliott's going to be making a bank deposit tomorrow in Dawsonville. Yeah, for at least that 10 grand at halfway. Here he is, ready to lap Dick Trickle in car number eight. And that car is the 11th position on the field. 198 laps are complete. The speed is averaging 107, 816. The record is 105, 397. Earnhardt, a year ago, we're about, we would estimate, five to 10 laps away from making pit stops under green. We've only had one caution if you're just joined us. Just one, Jimmy Means lost an engine from laps 101 to 106. We were down under yellow. Other than that, it's been green lights all the way. Two lead changes among just two drivers thus far in this event. And there goes Trickle down a lap. Now you see Brett Bodine making up time. Remember, he's many laps down. He was 12 minutes in here working on the rear end of his car. Now you see Mark Martin's car number six. He is also well back. He is back in the 20th position, I believe. Mark Martin, what's the emotion like uh, when you have a bad start on the season? Well, we've got a real determined race team, you know, between Jack and Steve and myself the people and all the energy that goes into race to, to putting our program together and uh, it hurt us really really bad but we also have enough experience to know that if we let let it show that it'll it'll just hurt us that much more and when 
Daytona's over, it's over. And there's not but one thing you can do, and that's march on down the road, wide open, as hard as you can go, and that's what we're doing. We're stomping out here after this championship, one race at a time, as hard as we can go. They are all the same amount of points, so you just have to do your best in every race and, and uh, you know, try to get your piece of the pie. Currently 15th in the points. Mark Martin with one top 10 finish thus far this season and things not going well, currently running in 20th position. Meanwhile, look at car number 11. Junior Johnson's car, Bill Elliott at the keyboard. And what a performance they're giving. And there you see that interval, first to second. And back there in that second spot, that 33 car, He's trying to close that distance down. The difference stays at one and two ten seconds between first and second spot. Again, they went through some traffic a while ago, and that's one of the big benefits of leading the race. When that leader comes by, they put that pullover flag out and warn the other guys that the leader's coming. The guy leading the race really gets more used to that flag than anyone else. Harry got hung up in a little traffic and lost some of that time that he was gaining on him. We've closed past halfway, and Elliott continues to run this race for his 36th win right from the outset. It was all his. He was on the pole for the second time at Richmond. He's never won this event, and he's had some pretty bad luck here when he and Ernie and Dan used to bring cars down. They lost. A, they worked all winter on a short track car on the old track. They lost up here in turn four, and I think that's the one where you shortened the one of Junior's cars by about four feet. I think I set a record for stopping the shortest distance. Recall you did. It's not in the record book, though. I don't understand. It's in the back of my neck. I still remember. <laughs> it's not in my head. It's in my neck. Second Ford front row of 1992 started this race. Mark Martin and Elliott were at Daytona. This time, it was Elliott and Davey Allison up in front. Davey's back there in third. And the middleman here is Harry Gant. That Oldsmobile stays in there, matching lick for lick. That leader at the present time stays just about one and four-tenths seconds back. And when you've got Harry Gant behind you, you have to consider that even if he doesn't have as much power, he'll muscle that car. He'll manhandle that thing, and he'll shove it up in there if there's any possible way. He did it yesterday. And he started 28th yesterday and won the race, and here he is now. I, I promise you, Bill Elliott, when he looks in that mirror, and sees that car and says, of all people, what is he doing coming? Because Harry just seems to nip away and nip away. And I promise you, Elliot doesn't need to call from the fence to say Gant is coming because he looks in that mirror and he, he knows that car very well. And it's a bad feeling to see that car coming after you. I always liked what Beth Tushak of USA Today said about Harry Gant. She said that when he was really running well, it was a well-mannered hurricane coming up through the field. <laughs> I don't know, it might have been a cyclone. Harry, Harry's too old to be a hurricane. He just keeps plugging away at it and it just happens. Let's get the uh, Goodyear mid-race report right now. Gentlemen, we're at the Good Update Center, and we're going to take a look at the standings after 200 laps halfway through the event. Only Bill Elliott and Davey Allison had managed to lead. The only two leaders, as you can say, two lead changes at this point. Bill Elliott's average speed of nearly 108 miles an hour. Just one caution period for six laps. The only car out, the 52 of Jimmy Means at this point. And here are your lap leaders so far today. Elliott leading from the, the beginning, the green, to 123. Davy Allison led lap 124, and really only a few feet of that lap. He was able to stick the nose of the 28 car in there for a time. Elliott got back around him on the backside of the racetrack, and he's led all the way to this point. We're in the second half of the Pontiac Excitement 400, and Bill Elliott really putting everybody to shame here this afternoon. Ken, Ken right now, what would be an ideal thing? Here we are. We're real close to pit stops. What would be nice would be, there goes Morgan Shepard out of pit, would be extend one of your pit stops and hope Elliott pits, and then a caution comes out. Stay out there as long as you can. But the problem you have there, that 11 car is capable of going as far or further than anyone on the racetrack. I think everyone will wait just as long as they possibly can, hoping Elliott pits before they do, and then catch a caution. But it's hard to outweigh that 11 on fuel. You see them coming around the Travis Carter car. Jimmy Spencer in the 98 getting lapped by Bill Elliott as he continues to bulldoze this race back field. Here he is coming up on Morgan, who's just been in, and there's the 68 of Hamilton. Hamilton's running currently in the 20th spot as we begin to make pit stops. Bobby Hamilton out of Nashville, Tennessee, in yellow number 68. 
Again, look how close Harry Gant is right now. They look, got caught in just the least little bit of traffic, and Gant is right there. Gant is close enough. If he can get around this pack, he'll be right on Elliott. But they're fixing to have to make pit stops, and that could separate them again. Doesn't look to me like Elliott, for the moment, is as concerned at 2.14. He knows he's got some distance to go, and that car is working so well. There's no question that Gant is getting into it. But so, for that matter, are Michael Waltrip and Darrell Walters. They're running back in fourth and fifth. They're staying in that lead lap and running well. And now we see a lot of leaders coming on pit road. Schrader's just come in. Davey Allison comes in. Dick Trickle is on pit road. A couple of laps down comes Ernie Urban. So pit stops are the order of the day here at Richmond International Raceway. Sold out house enjoying this great Winston Cup race which is being run at a record speed of over 108 miles per hour. The old record just a year ago by Earnhardt at 105. Sterling Marlin is in. Fuller is in. Also coming in now is the uh, 18 car. Dale Jarrett is in. Michael Waltrip. Ricky Rudd. This is the activity that's taking place at the moment. This is all under green. We've only had one caution, and Jimmy Means lost an engine early. Here comes Gant down pit road now. There's Sterling Marlin. We see him in a hell of a problem. Here's Gant coming in. This is going to be critical. He, if he can get in and get out and get in front of Bill, he might be able to hold the lead a while. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Thing this team does not want to have happen is a caution come out while they're on pit road, but Harry Gant brings the skull bandit and almost gets hit by Hut Strickland as he noses it in. Andy Petrie and the crew go to work on the right side. It's definitely be a four-tire change. Right side is down on the automobile. Over on the left side of the automobile right now. Pace keeps going on the racetrack. Five pit stops so far by the Andy Petrie crew. And now it's going to take Burton with the leader of the race. And he is in also going to make a forward tire change. They're not going to adjust anything on the car. The right side tires are on. He's among the last to come in. And that suggests he's getting very good gas mileage. Tim Brewer, the crew chief, on the left front. This is a very well executed, very fast pit stop. Elliott's gone. Gant was in 20. Elliott was in 22.8. And here they come. Here's Bill Elliott going down pit road, and Harry Gant is coming down the front straightaway. Gant is going to take the lead. Gant's going in one ahead of Bill. And remember, it's 40 mile per hour limit on pit road today. Not 60, not 65, 4 0. I feel like you can get out and walk faster. Have you seen those radar guns yet? I, I noticed today when we were getting ready to do our opening, I was over there and looking in the window, and the NASCAR people had all of their had all of their people lined up as to where they were, and there actually is an assignment for the guy with the radar gun here. You know, we keep thinking he's hiding behind some sign somewhere, but they're getting. I think that was a hair dryer. Here you see Waltrip coming in. What are you feeling about Richmond, Darrell Waltrip? Everybody hated, but I liked it. I always knew that when I came here that if things went like I expected them to, I'd win the race. Uh, it'd come down between Earnhardt and I a couple of times and maybe Rudd a time or two, but most of the time I pretty well had things my own way here. I could, the old track was slick, it was treacherous, it had that guardrail around it, but I could always stay out of trouble just good enough to be there at the finish and win the race. I haven't been that fortunate on this new racetrack. I haven't been able to find the balance that I'm looking for. I get a car a little too tight off of two and a little too loose off of four, and uh, you can't run here like that. You've got to have a car that's pretty well neutral all the way around this racetrack. Two different turns. Turn two is kind of tight out next to the wall. Turn four here, you kind of run off in a D shape. So I haven't really come up with the right combination for me uh, for the race here yet. I haven't had the kind of runs here that I would like to have. I haven't led a lot of laps here since they redid the racetrack, but this is my best chance, I believe. My car feels the best it's felt here in a long time. Disregard the car for a moment. Jeff Hammond and that crew on pit road. Neil, they just put him out in 20.7, 20 20.7 seconds. That's as fast as we saw the Gantt stop, and he was leading when he came in. Now with the shakeout going on, we'll have Harry Gantt back in first. Davey Allison, we believe, in second. And we'll have Bill Elliott in third with 2.23 complete. We'll have it all sorted out when we come back. It's been said that American workers are lazy. We want high pay without working. And give too little attention to quality. The fact is, U.S. workers are the most productive in the world. And then some. It looked like a slice to me. For all the hard work and achievements of the American worker, thanks. 
from Budweiser. When it comes to making batteries that last, somebody's in high gear. Duracell. Today's Duracell batteries can even outperform the ones we made just a few years back. You can't top the copper top. All of these championship winning drivers have one thing in common. Goodyear Racing Eagles. The race-winning technology that's found in the Goodyear Racing Eagles can also be found in the world's best-selling line of high-performance street tires. Goodyear Eagle Street Radios. The champions know, and it's why we say, the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. If I want to keep playing baseball, I'm going to have to keep working. There's no off-season anymore. Every day it's just me and a pile of iron. Or a bike I ride forever. And when I get sore, I take Advil. It's strong, it works, and I know it helps. And Advil's gentler on my stomach than aspirin. To last as long as I have, you got to stick with what works. That's why I use Advil. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Keystone Beer presents a NASCAR profile with Wally Dallenbach, Jr. In a rich to not-so-rich professional racing career, Wally Dallenbach Jr. has joined the ranks of NASCAR's Winston Cup drivers on his own merits. Young Dallenbach teamed with Jack Roush in the middle 80s, winning two SCCA Trans Am championships in 1985 and 86. At the same time, his wife Robin was competing on the IMSA circuit. Roush and Dallenbach virtually dominated IMSA's GTO class, winning 14 races and finishing as the runner-up in the Drivers' Championship in 1988. They were on a roll. It seemed that Wally Jr. would follow in his father's footsteps and race Indy cars, but after four dismal Indy starts, Dallenbach was unable to land a full-time ride on the kart circuit. The going got tough. Now, though, he's back with Roush Racing, where they'll campaign the Keystone Ford Thunderbird. The switch to Winston Cup racing may bring back those great paydays. Here he is running in uh, 29th position <laughs> a week ago. He ran at Rockingham, and when it was over, he was saying to people, 500 miles at Rockingham, 24 hours at Daytona in the Sunbank race, or the Rolex race now, is easier than, than running the Rock. He got a big stock car experience last week in Rockingham. I'm telling you, Rockingham and Dover, they'll get your attention. I've been to Daytona, but I always remember Rockingham and, and Dover being the tough guys. All right, here's Harry Gant continuing out in front. There are 232 laps complete. Gant in control, Allison in second, Elliott is third, Rutt maintains fourth, and Waltrip is fifth. Let's go down and join the newest car owner in the Winston Cup Series. He's at the STP Pit Center. Gant, we're pleased to welcome head coach Joe Gibbs of the world champion Washington Redskins and a new Winston Cup team owner as well. Coach, welcome. Your team got off to kind of a rough start in the first two weeks of this season. Yeah, I tell you, it was tough for us. I felt bad for the guys and the interstate food line, everybody pulling for us. But we uh, ran good in both our first two races. We had a motor problem last week, and uh, the first week we had the big wreck. Now today, Dale got a little out of shape earlier. What have you done to the car so far this afternoon? Well, we started off a little loose. We thought we were in pretty good shape when we started to race, but we wound up a little loose and gradually working with it. I'm hoping we'll handle better and better as we go. What are you doing to try to make the team stronger now that you've gotten your feet wet in a couple of races? Well, I think really in this one, I'm the owner. My job is to make sure we get everything it takes to go fast. Jimmy and Dale are the two guys that are... Their job is to make us go fast and get up front. So uh, I think we have a good young team. I think we got a lot of people that really care about us uh, from a sponsorship standpoint. Appreciate Chevrolet and everybody giving us a chance. So I'm excited about getting the opportunity. Dale's up to 14th spot right now. Let's hope you have a good finish today. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Working right behind Derek Cope in uh, car number 10 out there. That is Dale Jarrett. So after Daytona and Rockingham, how do you feel about the car, Dale? 
uh, I'm still excited. Uh, the cars are driving great and uh, the engines are running good. We got a good program put together here. It's just a matter of getting these things out of the way. We knew there would be problems. Uh, we weren't kidding ourselves or anybody else that things are going to happen. Uh, we just didn't expect it the first two races. What did Joe say? I mean, I know, I know it's going to happen, right? But what did he think about it? Well, he told me that it was his fault. He said he's the worst starter in anything that there is. He said when he started with the Redskins, he went 0 5 to start with. Didn't know if he'd have a job the sixth game. So uh, he understands it. Uh, you know, certainly he's concerned that we're this far back in the points already. But uh, he knows that the guys have worked awfully hard and put good race cars under me, and that uh, eventually these things are going to work out. And if the cars keep driving like this, that uh, we'll be challenging the win before long. In 14th position here today in our live coverage on CBS for Richmond, Dale Jarrett with 239 laps complete. Record speed being attained. Average speed now stands at 107.9. Old record, Earnhardt a year back at 105.3. There's your leader. It's Harry Gant out in front. Can he be run down? There's that possibility. Already Bill Elliott has moved up. He has taken that second spot and he is closing. There's Gant in the lead. And the number 11 car is right there, knocking on the door in second spot. Bill Elliott in that second position. Then looking a little further back to show you how the field is lying at the present time with 240 now on the board. Third spot belongs to Davey Allison. Car number 28 is there in the third position. Davey maintaining third. We've got another Chevy behind that Ford running in fourth spot as we go back through the field is Ricky Rudd in car number five. Rudd, who has had a, been out there all day and, and minded his business, tended to his knitting, he stays Ricky Rudd in fourth. As you look at Alice, now we're back here. Picking up, now we're picking up the leaders again because all of a sudden, here comes Elliot. You know, we saw earlier Gant was able to run run him down but he couldn't pass Bill now it's gonna be Bill's job to run Harry down and try to get around him maybe he could do that in heavy lap traffic there you see Ricky Rudd that fourth place car right in front of him well, was Charlie Glotz back the 90 now he gets away from him and closing in comes Elliot back with the leaders again Gant is there Elliot is in second this is for first place at lap 244 this time by Ernie Irvin getting a little high and it opens up the inside down comes Elliot back comes Gant Boy, Ken Gant is the kind of driver that just takes things in stride. If you can run him down, catch him, and get by him, he usually doesn't really challenge you that hard because he knows there's a lot of racing left. But if he thinks that car is able to maintain the lead, he'll stay after you. We but. need to stay right here for a minute, don't we? This is a dandy. Here comes Elliott again on the bottom of the racetrack. And Gant stays on that outside. You get any horsepower advantage here on that 18 degree bank by taking it a little higher? That outside lane gets to run up over there, lets the car kind of, the inside car really bogs down and has to really use a lot of throttle and spin the rear wheels. That outside lane is a little bit easier on the tires and all. Now remember that earlier we saw Allison on the inside and Elliott on the outside in a good battle that went on for about six, seven laps. We saw these two same cars with Gant trying to make the inside move on Elliott and never could pull it off. Harry's going to make Bill try that inside if he wants back. Michael Waltrip is fifth. Darrell Waltrip is sixth. Kowicki is seventh. A lap down is Morgan Shepard in eighth. Todd Strickland ninth. Terry Labonte has come up into the tenth position. Sterling Martin on eleventh. Battle for the lead continues. Ken, we're seeing a real smart move here by Bill Elliott. We saw him run him down from way back. And he gets there, and he's just sitting on the rear bumper of Gant. He'll probably do this three or four laps. He'll mount him a charge and see if he can go by. Because like we've seen earlier, you don't get but one try to go by. If you clear him good, if you don't, you back up. So he's got to get all his eggs in a basket and try to go at one time. There's Jarrett. Tucks it down on the inside, gives some running room. There's Rick Mast in the number one right in front of them. This at lap 248. Pretty hard to shake up any of these top Winston Cup drivers. I mean, they work on each other a little out there, but when you get Gant out in front, pretty rock solid. That's Gibraltar. Now, well, as we're watching, the leaders were also wondering if Davy Allison could do anything with Bell Elliott and Harry Gant this afternoon, Robert. Well, they're awful strong, and, you know, Larry, the 
guys that keep making changes, they made a change after that first hundred laps and picked the car up some, but the other guys picked up some also. So uh, we're going to look like we're going to chase them, but we're going to make another chassis change the next stop. And, uh, you know, hopefully that'll, that the other guys won't do the same thing and get better and that we get better. So that's the game we're in. We're happy to be up front or near the front. It's a long ways from over. Well, 250 laps are now complete in this 400-lap race. There have been only four lead changes between four drivers thus far in the going. Elliott, Allison, Waltrip, Gant have been the opportunists to pick off those five bonus points for leading out here. Well, I tell you, Gant is running a real high line. Once he saw that that outside was pretty good, he moved it up there another notch. Gant is notorious for running real high on a racetrack, and in both ends of the racetrack, he's running the highest line of anyone out there. He seems to have such a good sense about where to run a race car, as good as anybody out there. The key is to run the race car where the race car wants to run. If you get a mindset that I'm going to run low, I'm going to run low, and the car doesn't like it down there, you're not going to go fast. The key is to let the car go where it wants to go when you follow it and try to turn fast laps. Must be a little bit like riding a horse. If you really want to make him go quick, you, you kind of let him go as much as he wants to as long as you keep him between the rails. It's hard to turn the third rail the opposite direction. He's got one, one set mind. So Gant stays in first. Pictures from our Pennzoil camera, top side here. 65,000 folks have gathered at Richmond International Raceway today. It is a beautiful day. We've had bad weather all week. We darn near lost the race yesterday, and then it just turned out perfect. Paul Sawyer had the right sink, and all of a sudden we had a great race and a good day and a wonderful crowd, and it's only gotten better. Today's Pontiac 400 aerials brought to you by Pennzoil Motor Oil. Ken, from that aerial, I believe they miscount a few people. I see people in that don't have seats. They're standing all around this racetrack. When you were a kid, you used to sneak into racetracks? Yeah, I used to go out to Birmingham racetrack and all, and uh, we used to climb a tree every now and then to watch the race, but uh, after that, I got to like it as much I went ahead and bought the tickets. You did? Bobby Isaac, who, who was my my favorite, he always, he, he said at Hickory, he used to go sit in the, in the tree in the cemetery and watch him race. I said, well, why didn't you sneak in? He said, it would have hurt too much if I got caught. <laughs> Boy, guy with a lot of pride and was a sensational racer. Yeah, look at Gantz. You know, we saw Bill make that charge on him, make a run a while ago, and now Gantz pulling away. And looks like Bill's fishing around for a different place on the track. He's tried it high and low, and Gantz is so strong, it's making him have to look for a different place. We're going to be back with more. We're 255 laps deep into the Pontiac Excitement 400, and for the moment, GM has a car out in front with Harry Gantz. Things are different. The all-new Pontiac Grand Am proves it. Things are better because no import at its price can match the power of its 16-valve engine and the control of its standard anti-lock brakes. Not a cord, not Camry, no one. In fact, Consumer's Digest named the Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac's new Grand Am, a new kind of excitement. Hey, Mike, hand me my channel on pliers. Tommy, give me that plier over there with the blue handles. What kind of pliers is that? These are channel lock tone and groove pliers. My dad uses them on his race car, too. For the tough jobs and the small jobs, reach for channel lock, the handiest plier of them all. Hey, guys, anybody seen the channel lock pliers? Channel lock. Be sure you're getting genuine channel lock pliers. Look for this trademark. This is Control, go ahead. We've got trouble. What's the point of origin? Japan. Stand by, I'm patching you through to command center. We've got to find it. Not it tomorrow. Tomorrow's too late. You inform headquarters. The work on it. Hold on. You've got something. Quick, check the vehicle ID number. That's it. With more parts for more import cars than anybody else. We've got it. Napa is a domestic solution to an international problem. To pull her through a nasty lunch, Maalox uses aluminum and magnesium. But his antacid is Tums, and Tums has calcium. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. First Contact wrote the book on cold medicine. And now a new chapter, Contact Day and Night. Day caplets for non-drowsy cold relief. Night caplets to relieve your symptoms to let you rest. New Contact Day and Night, a whole new chapter in cold relief. Second caution of the day. 
lap 260. Michael Waltrip, who was eight laps away from a top finish at Daytona, had an engine expire. It's happened again here today at Richmond. He was then running in the sixth position when it broke loose. Take boy, a look. Boy, Ken, this thing went up in a ball of fire. It exploded going down the back straightaway. The fire came out. It went out, and it, it lit about three or four different times. This is after he's coming down the front straightaway. He had a big fire all the way down the back straightaway. The motor just exploded in it. Here he is. After this has been burning for about a quarter of a lap. And thank goodness the fire went out. He's cutting across traffic, trying to get the inside, get out of the groove. And Leader has pitted. Gant coming in, and I believe we see Bill Elliott just dance down in here too at the same time. Bill Davey Slick. Allison's in. And all the guys on the lead lap, most of them came in that first time back. Motor gone on Michael Waltrip's car, still seeking that first win. The 28-year-old driver out of Owensboro, Kentucky, still holds high that second-place finish at Pocono in 1988 on that two-and-a-half-mile track up there in Pennsylvania. And, of course, he won uh, the Winston Open down at Charlotte a year back. Got himself a few poles. Bad break today. We're under caution. Let's take a moment right now for the U.S. Air Force Reserve Commander's Performance Award. Here's Lieutenant Colonel Ronald Hall. Thank you, Ken. Hi, folks. This is Lieutenant Colonel Hall presenting another Air Force Reserve Commander's Performance Award. The Commander's Performance Award is a very special award. It recognizes those individuals who have achieved success through the principles of leadership and teamwork. With me today to receive the award is Mr. Larry McReynolds. Larry is the crew chief for the Texaco Haviland Ford team. And we recognize your abilities and your teamwork and all that it takes to win on the NASCAR circuit. Congratulations. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Hall. I've seen this award given quite frequently on TV, and it's quite a surprise, a thrill, and an honor to receive it. I'd like to accept it on behalf of myself as well as the entire Robert Yates racing team. Larry McReynolds. One of the great guys in this game. What a job he's done with the Allison team. Let's go right to Dr. Dick Burke. Well, Michael Waltrip, how frightening a ride was that? I didn't even know I was on fire until they, they come running up to me trying to put me out, and uh, that, the, the fire went right out. It wasn't any big deal. Inboard fire extinguisher? Yeah, I was going to pull it, but they, they told me the fire went out pretty quickly. So uh, it's a shame, you know, uh, for the third race in a row, we had this Penzoil Pontiac really running well, and... Uh, We've just been dealt some bad cards. Uh, that wasn't anybody's fault. Something just broke. It snapped inside of the motor. You know, you can't blame that on anything. It's just kind of racing luck, I guess. This guy's day will come. I guarantee it. Bad day for uh, Mark Comquist, too, the engine builder for that team. Put a lot of effort in. They've worked so hard on their motor program, but you just saw about $35,000 up in the smoke. Ken, sometimes when you step up performance like we've seen this team do all year long, the way you step up performance is abuse things a little bit more. Turn the motor harder, you pay that price, and sometimes it happens. We're getting set for a restart. This time by, they'll turn them loose. Second caution of the day, just over after Michael Waltrip lost that engine. Ken, this is the first opportunity we've had in a long time on a caution situation with a pit stop to make those major changes. People want to put rubbers and springs and do this. We'll have to see if anybody helped their car enough to get back in condition. As they restart, Gant will be in front. Elliott will be in second. Davey Allison third. Ricky Rudd in fourth. Darrell Waltrip fifth. Alan Kowicki in sixth. It'll be Morgan Shepard in seventh. Hutt Strickland is eighth. Terry Labonte in ninth as they settle down and get ready to ramble once again at Richmond. I think we're seeing the uh, light come back on that pace car. We may take another lap. They doubled them up, ready to go, and now they're going to take another lap before they turn them loose. They may want to check this track after that meltdown on the car number 30 of Michael Waltrip. Ken, what a cause that a lot of times. Elmo Langley in that pace car will see something on the track, and he'll make that call from the car. We need one more to get the stuff off the track, and I see Elmo motioned it was okay that time, and they give him one to go now. That was fun to watch that Legends race in Charlotte and see Elmo Langley, who a lot of us grew up watching on short track, like Manassas and places like that, go out there and put that wheel under Kaylee Arborough. Even Kale was laughing about it when it was over. Well, I tell you, he was racing was up fun. for the money. A quarter mile track. Good old days of racing. Real racing. Get right down there and muscle them and change those fenders every lap. Ready for the start. We're at 265, 266 when they take the Again, it's got Bill and Davey right behind them, and they both want to see if they can get that car back behind them. They can't show too much strength for them. Dale Jarrett would like to take a lap back here on the bottom, too, if he possibly could right now. He's running 13th. 
Things getting a little better for the Joe Gibbs team. Dave Marcus is number 71, is on pit road. It cost him another lap. 82 winner here in this race. On the break, Gant came off the fourth turn beautifully. But look at Jarrett on the inside, trying, trying to stay up there. I don't think it's to be. There's the 33 of Gant down the back straightaway. But Jarrett staying right with him. That's a good show. As Dale Jarrett, that winner at Michigan in that dramatic finish last June, or rather last July, a few feet right here, and a caution flag is worth three-quarters of a mile. So if he can just stay in front of him, and which now here they go back around him on the outside. But it's so critical to try to get that lap back. Gary Allison closing in from third. The number 28. Mexico Haviland car looking very stout. You know, for all of this race being somewhat dominated by that number 11 car, this is a heck of a race. This has been fun to watch all day. Bill's taking a look down under Harry. He got in there before and couldn't do anything with him, and he's, he's going to stick it down there one more time to see if he can get up under Gant. 269 this time by. Elliott comes down to the inside, and Harry Gant hangs him high. Here they go into turn one. Elliott on the bottom of the racetrack. Clears the old him. demon from Dawsonville's got it wound. That time he pulled it out. Bill Elliott back in first place. Harry Gant is in second. Outside, on the back straightaway, maintaining 30, putting a lap on Jared is Davey Allison. Meanwhile, lying fourth on the field, it's Ricky Rudd in the number five, just behind Davey. Darrell Waltrip, Alan Kowicki, six cars now remain in the lead lap at 270. Gant's not giving up. You know, when Bill passed him before, he got away. Here's Gant driving right back up on the rear bumper, right in the middle of the corner. This is where Gant is so strong. He can just get back at him. Gets right down there, and you talk about true grit. Gant's it. Ken, that's what I was talking about before. Gant's the type guy. Elliott got up there, made the move on him. You could almost see going in one. Gant roll out of the throttle, let Bill back in there, but he's not giving up. He might concede a little bit, but he's not going to give up the fact that he can come back around that 11 car. For all of you who played that Gillette halfway game, Elliot was there at halfway. We'll give you a winner before we get off the air today. Thank you for participating. Hope you're enjoying the race today here on TBS. Bill Elliott certainly is. And I think Harry Gant's having a very good time. I would say so. It's nice when you're running that way. It really makes it enjoyable in that race car. The last round of pit stop, Bill Elliott's team made a couple of adjustments. One was to the race car. They put a bit of wedge in it. The other, incredibly, was to a NASCAR official's radio. They fixed it. Now, that sounds like a pretty kindly thing to do, but what they fixed was the button so the NASCAR official could talk to the tower. That way, they could argue their case if something comes down the road a little while later. Davey Allison slipping into second. Davy Allison to second. Gant is back to third. Davy Allison showing his strength now. And that was a very quick move just down to the inside and through. So there wasn't any long tussle between the two to let Elliott get away. Ken, we just heard Robert Yates say they were going to make changes on every stop. They're still changing that car, still changing. They're trying to get it where they can race with the leaders, and they must have improved a little bit because he's around Gant now. Oldsmobile, Chevy, Ford, and Chevrolet. Let's take a look again at how they're running at the present time. There you see Bill Elliott in the lead, looking for that 36 Winston Cup win. Behind him, Davy Allison pulled himself with the bootstraps right in the second spot. And then Harry Gant back to third for the moment. This is 277 complete. Looking further back on the field. You see the lap car here. Dale Jarrett, Joe Gibbs team, 14th behind him. Now, here is your fourth place car, Ricky Rudd, car number five, engine prepared by Waddell Wilson. That team has changed on. And there's Alan Kowicki, number seven. He's running fifth. Kowicki in that fifth spot. Then you see the number 21, which is Morgan Shepard. He had that great second place finish this year, and he is 
picked up a spot. He's showing in seventh now, lap down. One lap down. There is the car, last car in the lead lap. That is Darrell Waltrip. He is running in six positions. They come down the main straightaway. Six cars in the lead lap as we approach 280 complete. There's the 94 car. That's Terry Labonte. He is running eighth over on in the field, a lap down, and that's an Oco car. Behind him would be Sterling Marlin, the 22. There's a lap car in there, which is the Schrader car, number 25. You can see Schrader and the Hamilton, number 66. I mean 68. Hamilton is running 22nd on the field. He's running pretty well today, too, is Bobby Hamilton. Yep. Now there's Sterling Marlin's number 22. He's being shown ninth place on the field. And you see Ernie Urban back some. And Rusty Wallace, who is not having any fun now. You were talking about those that have fun and don't have fun. He's in 23rd spot. And I understand there's a tremendous amount of pressure on that team. But the Penske team is not exactly in disarray, but they're really feeling the pressure that they need to perform there. I would think that pressure is self-imposed because they don't want anything but the best. You see the number four, Ernie Irvin. This is not his day for sure. He was down early, being shown uh, a couple of laps, three laps back, and in 16th position. There you see Hutt Strickland. He is running 10th on the field at the present time. Look at this battle. Here's 33 and 28 at it again. Gant just doesn't give up. Little lean there. Just get in the corner a little bit wide. Make it now. Davey's going to drive back up under him. He got a little wide getting in. Your turn, my turn. Gant pulls off by a couple of car lengths. The ethic of Gant is. And here's another good battle. Seven and five are at it. Well, we'll get back to that story in a moment about about Harry Gant and how he feels about work. The kind of guy you like. Back up to the front, and there you see car number 11, Bill Elliott in front. Again, Bill's driving away while he's doing this. We'll go to commercial break and be back for the action. Monday and Tuesday night, it's sky-high suspense with three action-packed disaster epics. Mayday! Burt Lancaster, Jacqueline Bissett, and George Kennedy. The original airport. Possible emergency. Charlton Heston, Karen Black. Oh, my God! Oh airport 75. And the suspense concludes with Jack Lemon and James Stewart. Airport 77. It all begins at 8.05 Eastern, Monday night on TBS. Racing. I can't explain it. You're kind of in a limbo zone. Time's different. Speed's different. Everything works different. It sounds totally cosmic. <laughs> it's out there somewhere. Kyle Petty and Mellow Yellow. There's nothing mellow about them. The crowning achievement of TNT's MGM Mile. MGM, When the Lion Roars, a spectacular three-part series revealing the untold stories of a Hollywood empire, begins March 22nd only on TNT. When what you eat and drink upsets your stomach, you want a medicine that works directly on your stomach. Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, Pepto delivers powerful medicine right where you hurt. Pepto-Bismol. When you work for a doctor during cold season, you're going to get a cold. But I'm ready. With Advil cold and sinus, it's tough on colds, like Advil is on pain. <laughs> Advil cold and sinus, advanced formula for the cold season. With 290 laps complete, this is the battle. Davy Allison falling back. Alan Kowicki is the man on the move. He's on the outside, and he's going to third spot. Alan Kowicki picks it up a notch. 
Davy Allison falling to fourth. That's at lap 291 as they came about. As Davy Allison finds himself another spot back. A bit of a surprise as Alan Kowicki continues to show some real racing strength out here. Let's go to the STP Pit Center. Rick Benjamin is standing by for a Goodyear Eagle update. Well, Ken, today's Winston Cup action is not the only Major League Racing action going on. The NHRA series is running in Houston, Texas, the Slick 50 Nationals. The finals are later on today, but let's take a look at how qualifying for the Slick 50 Nationals went yesterday. In top fuel qualifying yesterday, the number one position went to Michael Brotherton. We're going to show you his run. He sets a new national record in top fuel at 4.884 seconds with a speed of 290.32 miles an hour. And funny car, veteran John Force in the left lane here took the top spot for today's finals. Force at 5.184 seconds, a speed of 285.08. And pro stock near the camera, Bruce Allen in his Super Shops car, another national record. He qualifies first 7.164 their last time, the speed of 191.73 for Allen. But the day yesterday was not without incident at Houston's uh, drag strip that's hosting the Slick 50 Nationals. Funny car driver Stan Sipos, we're going to see him in a moment in the near lane, the apex car. Sipos gets out of shape very early in this run, goes to the center line, drifts toward the middle, and he overcorrected getting the left wall before the body comes off, the drag shoots come out. He nearly got over the fence. Sipos uh, was able to stop the car at the finish traps and get out safely. The finals of the NHRA Slick 50 Nationals today in Houston. And that's it for now from the STP Pit Communications Center. Thank you very much, Rick. Do you ever want to be a drag racer? Yeah, I went out there with John Force when he was running the funny cars to yeah. do one of the winter shows, and he told me to climb in that thing, and that's the only piece of equipment I never wanted to climb in. <laughs> I don't think I could handle it. You're watching Dick Trickle. He's been running well. He's been shown in 12th, and all of a sudden, he is off the pace. Slowing down, Dick Trickle out of Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin, as you see the uh, Napa standings after 275 of 400 laps here today. And while we were talking, Ken, uh, Darrell Walker got around Ricky Rudd, put him in fourth place, so he's moving, excuse me, fifth place, he's moving up now. 17 car into fifth, Darrell Waltrip on the move. And there you see, Waltrip's number 17, that is now fifth, Rudd is back in sixth, and we have but six cars in the lead lap. They're showing Sterling Marlin, a lap down in seventh, Morgan Shepard eighth, then in ninth is Terry Labonte, tenth is Hutch Strickland, eleventh is Dale Earnhardt. Two hundred ninety eight complete We're about three quarters of the distance average speed stays at one oh six point one three two still looking for that record as we follow uh, Davy Allison here getting around number eighty eight Jeff Fuller here is Dick Bergman. Well, Ken, Davey Allison is dropping off the pace. The problem is not a particularly serious one. He's picked up a push, but they sure would like to have a pit stop to make an adjustment on that car to put him back up up there. Ken, as this is going on, we're watching Davey right here. Darrell Waldrop, who just passed Ricky Rudd two laps earlier, is really closing in. We'll probably see that we have to see Darrell come in right behind him here. He's, he's about 50 yards behind him, and it's going to take but a couple of laps for him to close in the way he's Davey's fading right now. Front four cars are, are all in a straightaway at the present time. If you got to the back end of this Richmond International Raceway, go to three, you'd have car number 11 leading, and then you'd be back here coming out of turn two with the 17 and the five car in fifth and sixth spot. Ricky Rudd is currently bringing that Chevrolet around, staying in the top six. Do you like to race at Richmond, Virginia, Ricky Rudd? Uh, you know, you seem to like any racetrack wherever you got the car hooked up well, but I guess the, the fast racing results here have been pretty good for me, and any time you, you come to a racetrack and consistently have good success, you always look forward to going back, and that's the way it is at Richmond, and plus it's, it's close to my home. I still have a home here about 100 miles away, so closest thing to a home track, so always a little extra incentive and extra uh, fun when I come to Richmond. Ricky Rudd one here in 84 Hope to duplicate it today there you see him and there's sterling marlin diving down they have sterling as a lap down to him showing that seventh spot what started well back today bill elliott leads 303 laps are complete as we set up for the finish here today at richmond 
The Pontiac Excitement 400 is brought to you by Valvoline Motor Oil. People who know, use Valvoline. Mark and my relationship goes way past business. Um, I'm sure in a previous life, he and I were twin brothers. Throughout the race, the driver and crew chief communicate. The driver complains about the car or brags about the car. It's the crew chief's job on pit stops to make whatever fixes he can to help the driver's predicament. Everyone has about the same access to equipment and technology, but the people who rub on it the most and think the most of it and think about it the most will end up winning the race. Alka-Seltzer Plus goes to the Arctic Circle, where the toughest colds live. The cold is miserable in this environment. Uh, Alka-Seltzer Plus takes care of the aches, the runny nose. It does the job. Alka-Seltzer Plus fights tough winter colds with a combination of ingredients you can't get anywhere else. Alka-Seltzer Plus has done exactly what I've needed it to do. If I don't go to work, kids go hungry. Alka-Seltzer Plus, tough medicine for tough winter colds. And for your tough sinus symptoms, try Alka-Seltzer Plus sinus allergy medicine. these championship winning drivers have one thing in common, Goodyear Racing Eagles. The race winning technology that's found in the Goodyear Racing Eagles can also be found in the world's best selling line of high performance street tires, Goodyear Eagle Street Radios. The champions know, and it's why we say, the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. Gillette presents Sensor, the system the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by the following. Goodyear, number one in racing and makers of Goodyear Eagles, the most successful line of high-performance tires in the world. And by Phillips 66 Trop Arctic Motor Oil, the high-quality motor oil for year-round engine protection. Long live your car with Phillips 66 Trop Arctic. And by the Gillette Company, maker of Right Guard Antiperspirant and Deodorant for maximum protection against wetness and odor. And Sensor Shaving System, the revolutionary razor that adjusts to the contours of your face. And by the Air Force Reserve. For most people in the world, the intense power of the F-16 is thousands of feet above. For you, it's a phone call away. The Air Force Reserve, a great way to serve. 311 laps are complete. Bill Elliott stays out in front as we follow him around this three-quarter mile sold out Richmond International Raceway. Going for two in a row. Going for his first win at Richmond is Elliott in the Junior Johnson car number 11. The average speed is well up. They can turn about 130 in the straightaways. The average speed for the race after two cautions is 106.432. That's a pretty good mark over the 105.3 belongs to Earnhardt. Now there you see the leader, Bill Elliott. But at the moment, the story is the man behind him, Harry Gant at number 33. The bandit has been closing ground, Neil Bonnet. I tell you, Harry has really got that thing going out there on the outside. Watch how far out he runs on the outside. He gets out there, gets a good fight off the corner, and he's closing on Bill every lap. Yeah, but hold the phone. Right behind number 33, also closing ground, is car number 7. Cole Wicke is quick. Look at him. He has cut that distance in half between himself and car number 33, Harry Gant. The three of these cars, if Bill can't pick up the pace a little bit, these three cars will be together in probably five or six laps of it close that pass. Now, the other three cars in the lead lap, Davey Allison lies fourth, Darrell Walter fifth, Ricky Rudd in sixth. Three fourteen on the board. Can Elliott hang on and win his first Richmond and win two back-to-back? -back? Look at this battle coming down through. It was Walter, Darrell Walter from the inside of Davey Allison. Here's Walter coming around three and four, getting down to the bottom of the racetrack. Alan Kowicki getting around the lap car of Smith. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Paul Andrews. Paul, you guys were nearly a lap down when that last caution came out.
out for Michael Waltrip. Now you're in the hunt. What did you guys do to the car? Well, he's been adjusting on the car a little bit, both on the last two bits. So I'm trying to get the car better. We were real good in the first race, a little bit off in the middle. Now we're back good where we need to be. We're still going to have a good pit stop in the next, and then hopefully the next caution will still be good for the end of the race. What about that next pit stop? Any chance of taking out two tires to grab the lead? Two, two tires? I didn't quite understand you. I don't know. We just need a good pit stop. Look at this, 17 and 28, side by side, fourth place, Darrell Waltrip, Davey Allison, what a scramble here. Down to the inside, Darrell Waltrip in the 17, now Davey Allison nips him off. There's a Ford Chevy battle for you. That was Rudd we saw right behind him, that's the other position they're dealing with right there. Darrell tried three or four laps on the inside, never could quite get by, he'll sit back and cool her down and try it again in a minute. Putting a lap on Dave Marcus, number 71, the 82 winner of this event. Do you really lay back till about three quarters of the race before you kick it in, Darrell Waltrip? So in a lot of cases, yeah. I like to kind of look over the rest of the field before I decide what I got to do. And besides that, if I can stay back and stay out of trouble and uh, the competition thins out a little bit, then that makes it a little bit easier at the end, too. I guess the other thing about it is, is uh, I've raced these races so long that I kind of feel like I know what the most important part of the race is, and that's the last 100 miles or the last 100 laps or whatever. So I always like to think that I've got a little bit left. I'm like a runner, uh, a marathoner or a sprinter or whatever. I, I like to think I got that little bit of extra kick left at the end that maybe no one's expecting. And, you know, if you race people all day long and all of a sudden you look in the mirror and you see somebody you haven't raced all day long, it kind of worries you. I think Davy Allison's worried, concerned perhaps, but not worried. Well, I tell you what, they got their hands full. Both of them, Daryl's got to make the move, and Davy's got to hold him back. A while ago, Ken, we were talking about Harry again. He said his car was running a little bit warm on the oil temperature. This is something that's been added to it that he doesn't need. Look at the grill area. A big hot dog wrapper or whatever it is, right dead center in the radiator. And he was already having a little temperature problem. This is really going to add to it. They're also concerned down here in the Harry Gant pit a few laps ago about the alternator. It was fluctuating. Uh, he had 14 volts, and Harry was turning the rear end cooler on and off. And I know Neil Bonnet, that is not a good sign. No, you know, that thing runs off the battery in that thing, and they just keep the time to cut it off a lap or two, turn it back on. You cannot run at this racetrack without that rear end cooler. If that alternator's all the way out, it's going to be hard for him to make it. we got 70 or 80 laps to go yet, and he can't make it with a problem like that. Bill Elliott stays first, Harry Gant second, Alan Kowicki third, and look at this. Fourth place one more time. Darrell Walter running inside, Davey Allison on the outside. This at lap 324. They'll pit again with what, about 25 to go? Looks like with 20 to 25 laps to go, all the leaders will have to put at least fuel in their cars. Six cars remain in the lead lap. Marlin is seventh, a lap down. Terry Labonte is in eighth, Morgan Shepard ninth, Hutch Strickland tenth, Dale Earnhardt back there in 11th. For fourth spot, Davey Allison outside. In the Ford. The Chevy down on the bottom, number 17. Richmond International Raceways where it's happening and where it will happen first week of September. Hope you're planning to be here. We'll be back again with TBS and our coverage. And don't forget, too, that there's some great races upcoming on the uh, Winston Cup schedule. Next week, they'll be in Atlanta. Then it's on to Darlington, March the 29th. We'll be with you at Charlotte for the Coca-Cola 600 Memorial Weekend. And here we are. This is second place. We told Gant was closing in. Now look here. Kowicki's all over Gant for, for second place. Elliott continuing to hold his own up in front. Here's Kowicki, ever closer. Be a great day for Alan Kowicki. Picked he, up a sponsor midway through last year, Neil, and he's been really looking to get a strong finish. Wouldn't it be wonderful if he put it together here? Ken, he's always run well at this racetrack since it's been redesigned. He's settled a pole so many times, had a lot of bad luck. And it looks like it's coming to him here at the end of the race. Interval first to third, Neil. How about one and six tenths seconds? And how about Kowicki dropping to the inside at number seven and making a Ford Oldsmobile show out of second place? Fading high is that 33. Gant's in his old Gant lane out there, way out of everybody's way. He doesn't mind. He'll sail her out there, and he'll give you that inside if you want to try it. He, he, he seems to find a special breeze out there. Hangs that sail out and floats it out of those corners. See the rear end of Kowicki's car? That's what we've been talking about all day. 
when they give you that inside line, it makes you work the rear end of that car harder. When you stand in the throttle, it wants to spin. And we saw him try to cut it down under, and he broke the rear loose up off the corner. Let's take a look at the telemetry out of the Mark Martin car number six, running in 18th as we leave you for a moment with 330 laps complete. Just ride along with Mark Martin. We'll see you back right after this. James Bond Weekend continues tonight. Take it to the limit with Roger Moore and boldly go where no spy has gone before. Moonraker, 7 Eastern tonight on TBS. The new Pontiac SSEI. It offers you uncompromised luxury. Supercharged power and unsurpassed security at a price many thousands less than the big sedans from BMW and Lexus. The new Pontiac SSEI. A higher level of excitement. This is the crew of America Cubed. 16 brave sailors who sweated and trained for the America's Cup and got here because they earned it. And one who got here because he drinks the right beer. You could be here, riding on America Cube during an actual cup race in San Diego. It's a great time on a fast boat from Coors Light, the beer that won't weigh you down. To win the ride of your life, look for details at this sweepstakes display. America Cubed, the thrill of victory, and you could be there. First Contact wrote the book on cold medicine. And now a new chapter, Contact Day and Night. Day caplets for non-drowsy cold relief. Night capless to relieve your symptoms to let you rest. New contact day and night. A whole new chapter in cold relief. The NBA on TNT. Four great teams. Two nights back to back. Oh, yes! Tuesday, the Lakers and Knicks at 8. Wednesday, the Celtics and Bulls at 8. The NBA on TNT. Bigger than life. Disregard that concern about that last stop for fuel under green. A caution. Out of turn number four. It was Brett Bodine looping the green and white colors of the Bernstein racing team. And it brings out the third caution of the day. So everybody has come on to pit road, fueled up, and we're ready to go home here. That's how close it was. They came off the track, first and second, and Dent almost beat him out of the pits, but they stayed it's in second place. 22-2 on the 11 car, and 22-2-6 on the Gantt car on pit road. That's about as close as they can cut it. And there you see them. Let's take a look at the aftermath of what happened up here in turn four to bring out this caution. The 26 car spun in front of these guys, and they were right across traffic. It didn't look like he hit anything. I don't know what kind of problem he had, but there was a lot of smoke and a lot of rubber flying off the car as he turned around. A lot of lucky people, too. They didn't get collected on that one. 334 is where we are at. It was 333 when they threw the caution for the third time today. We've had a total of 12 laps. This would bring us up to 14 or 15 yellow laps today, so it's marginal as to whether or not we're going to get a record. 105.3, Earnhardt 91 is the mark that they're seeking, and it's been Elliott, the man challenging for it most of the day. Chad Little in the Trop Arctic, number 66. How's it going for you out there right now? Let's uh, try to get uh, Chad Little in car number 66 another time. Chad, Ken Squire here at TBS Control. Do you read us? Yeah, Ken, I hear you. How's it going for you out there today? But it's been a long day, I tell you. Um, when the car's not handling right, it's, uh, it's a handful out here. And, uh, you know, we're great we're, we're in the middle of boots coming off, and we can't, we can't really seem to get it right. We've tried, uh, you know, we've tried uh, every caution now to try to straighten it out. And, um, you know, we just missed it by a little bit today, but the guys in the pits are working hard. and. Um, uh, you're running in 25th position right now. How physically do you feel as we get down to the end of this race? Thank you. Okay, there's the number 66. Chad, as we get down to the end of this, Chad, a little Ken Squire again here. How do you physically feel after running this three-quarter mile track for over 300 laps? 
I feel pretty good. Um, uh, Dave Barkett, uh, I was following him for a long time, and, and he's, uh, he's blowing a lot of smoke, so I was getting a lot of smoke in my car, but other than that, I mean, I feel fine. Uh, there's no problem here with that. It's just, uh, it's just frustrating for me and the guys at Phillips when the car's not handling right. It makes a long day out of it. Chad, can anybody beat Elliot today? That's what I'll be on your toes here on the get-go. All right, there's his crew talking to him as they get ready on the get-go. So we're down to it, ready for a restart this time by. Ken, we just found out the 26 car broke another axle. Brett Bodine, who broke one earlier, just broke it coming off this corner, and that's why it spun. So they must have a lot of camber in that rear end, and the axles just won't stay in it. A lot of torque that's just tearing them to pieces when they come off these corners. He tried to light it up, and instead it spun out from underneath him, and he broke the rear end again. Here you see the story. There's Bill Elliott out in front. There's Harry Gant, number 33, in second spot. And here comes old DW, number 17, Darrell Waltrip, lies right there in third. Ricky Rudd in fourth, Kowicki is fifth. Davey Allison, sixth, restart, 337 complete as they touch him off. Both of Junior Johnson's cars, one on the inside trying to get a lap back and one leading the race. Any team orders out there with Junior, let one of them get back up on the lead lap. You think, you know? I promise the team orders was don't touch. <laughs> don't touch each other. He had a little touch down there at Daytona. That was a long, I bet that was a long moment on Monday back up there in Ingle Hollow. Here you see Elliott drawing away big time as he goes into turns one and two. Out the back of the Trop Arctic cars, they shuffle through traffic. There's Elliott leading with Sterling Marlin second, who's a lap down. And here comes Gant, gonna have to get around Sterling before he gets to him. Now, Oh, we got one in the wall. It's Mark Martin lying the number six up in the wall in turns three and four. And from the back of the Valvoline Ford, that's where it comes to rest. Car number six ground right into the wall. They're racing back to the line. Here comes Sterling Marlin trying to make his lap up. Down to the inside. Marlin fighting to make that lap up. Elliott trying to hold him down. So there's your answer about team strategy. You stay down a lap, Sterling. I don't know if Junior could get on the radio quick enough that time. <laughs> Bad break for car number six, Mark Martin. Well, I'll tell you what, Ken. I, that thing, it looked like it cut a tire down or something. He just knocked the wall down. You could hear it way up here. I'm glad to see him moving around. Because you would think on a three-quarter mile racetrack, it's not that bad a lick, but he hit a turn. That's what got you. Yep. Yeah, Charlotte, sure. when you broke your hip and your leg so badly. I mean, it, it didn't look like it had gone in that hard, and that was that was a terrible thing. Yeah, and I tell you what, Ken, it was in a valvoline car like this. They're great people, but they sure don't need those things stuck on the wall like that. While Mark's getting out of this car right here, we'll see if we go to commercial, and we'll be back with more of the Richmond race. It's nothing serious. It only wakes me up a couple of times a week. It really doesn't affect me. I avoid foods that are fried or spicy. I can deal with it. I just take antacids. If you have frequent heartburn symptoms like acid indigestion or burning in the chest, talk to your doctor. These may be signs of a serious medical problem. Your doctor has treatment plans that can help. It's only a heartburn. I should learn to live with it. Right? Frequent heartburn. Isn't it time you talk to your doctor? This is the crew of America Cubed, 16 brave sailors who sweated and trained for the America's Cup and got here because they earned it. And one who got here because he drinks the right beer. You could be here, riding on America Cube during an actual cup race in San Diego. It's a great time on a fast boat from Coors Light, the beer that won't win you down. To win the ride of your life, look for details at this sweepstakes display. America Cubed, the thrill of victory, and you could be there. Al Unser Jr. knows the corkscrew at Laguna Seca with his eyes closed. Fortunate, considering it's a blind turn. Mark Martin knows if he lets someone cross his wake at 200 miles per hour, his car may be doing the lambada. And Joe Amato knows that at 296 miles per hour, he must pull his chute at precisely the right moment to keep from becoming an astronaut. Apparently, it is what you know. Dear Dave, how could I have known it would be even better the second time? Of course I speak of Wendy's chicken cordon bleu sandwich. I am in love with the whole chicken breast filet, ham, Swiss, grey poupon de jean moustard and mayonnaise, all as you say on a toasted kaiser bun. It was very different, very special. Au revoir, mon chéri. 
Wow. wow. Wendy's Chicken Cordon Bleu. There's nothing else like it anywhere. Welcome back to Richmond International Raceway, Richmond, Virginia. The Pontiac Excitement 400 still under caution at the 345 lap mark as Bill Elliott continues to wear out the field. We're going to make somebody very happy now. The Gillette Halfway Challenge is complete today, and the brand-new Chevrolet Lumina Z34 goes to Dean Helms of Lee Summit, Missouri. Dean made the phone call early today and was called back and was able to identify Bill Elliott as the leader halfway through today's Pontiac Excitement 400. So Dean gets the automobile. You can enter now for the next race. Just give us a call, one 900 Four three six seven thousand, and you'll be in the field for the next Gillette Halfway Challenge. Ken Squire, thank you, Rick. We're, we're going to tell you about when the Neil Bonnet got a chance at a new car one time too. We can talk a little bit more about these competitions between the major manufacturers. Let's for the moment take a look at this replay out here from the in-car camera. As we're coming out, take a look. That's Rick Mass, number one, right there. We're riding with Mark Martin. Put up the back straightaway. Through there, going down the back straightaway. Starting in the corner. For whatever the reason they got together, boy, he's going for a ride now. What a, and do not adjust your sets. That is not the problem. It's that concrete. Boy, it ate that race car up. What is for whatever reason? I don't know. When they got in the corner, it looked like they got together. It looked like a little tap from the rear, be it got, the guy got in too deep behind him, or maybe somebody stacked up in front of Mark. You, can't, you can never see the whole yeah. picture of what happened. We were talking earlier today about what happens with these manufacturers when they begin to turn the wick up a little. Now, what about it, Neil Bonnet? You, when you were a driver, did, did they ever get into this deal? Like, did the General Motors guys tell you, or Ford guys? I tell you what, when, when I was driving for Ford at the time, we were running out of parts and pieces. We didn't have any blocks for the cars. We were racing engine blocks that had sleeves in them. And we won, I think it was Atlanta, and the manufacturer was there. And we were in victory lane, and the guy says, boy, I'm going to give you a new Thunderbird. I said, if you'll give me some blocks, and I'll quit blowing up, I'll buy my own Thunderbirds. <laughs> I needed parts. Getting set for more action here at Richmond International Raceway. We'll be back with you to present it in just a moment. Things are different. The all-new Pontiac Grand Am proves it. Things are better. Because this Grand Am gives you a more powerful 16-valve engine standard than either Accord or Camry. They charge thousands more for this much power. In fact, Consumer's Digest named the Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac's new Grand Am. A new kind of excitement. Today, performance cars come in a variety of designs, sizes, and even prices. So do Goodyear Eagles, the world's most successful line of performance tires. There are all-season Goodyear Eagles. New ultra-performance Goodyear Eagles. There are Goodyear Eagles for the classic and for the contemporary. No matter what performance car you own, there's a Goodyear Eagle priced for you. It's another reason we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. When the job is tough, you need the best. And when you need the best, you reach for channel lock. For the power. The precision. For just plain counting on, there's only one channel lock. Be sure you're getting genuine channel lock tools. Look for this trademark. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. Manning. When we're back with you, 50 laps down to the finish of this one. For the moment, it's Bill Elliott's race to win. Harry Gant trying to take it away. Darrell Waltrip is in second. Look at this battle back in fourth place. Here's Alan Kowicki in the seven car and the five of Ricky Rudd. Rudd's had a tremendous run. He's finished the top five in seven of the last nine races here at Richmond. And right now, you can see that war that he continues to be in as he closes back up. On Alan Kowicki, Davey Allison in that mix. Ken, on that set of pit stops, Davey Allison made an extra stop and started in there. I don't know what, if they made a chassis adjustment, whatever, he did make an extra stop. Let's go to uh, Dr. Dick Berger. 
On that last yellow flag, Sterling Marlin had an opportunity to get back on the lead lap if only his teammate, Bill Elliott, had allowed him to do so. But he didn't. And after the yellow flag could stop for all that and over with, crew chief Mike Beam came over to his teammate, crew chief Tim Brewer, and said, what happened? Brewer just sort of shrugged his shoulders. Then you saw the two cars go side by side, lap after lap, until Junior Johnson got on the radio and said to Sterling Marlin, get back there. Well, these guys share a lot of technology, a lot of information, but when it comes to winning the race, you just saw what happens. Trying to get that lap back is Sterling Marlin. Sterling trying to get right back on the inside of number 11 and not getting much distance there. And look who's rolling up into the shot now, Mr. Gant trying to get around Sterling Wade and make a run on Bill. Ooh. The 28 car and the 5 car just bouncing down the main straightaway off each other here, and around goes Davey Allison. He cleared him when they had to get by. Kowicki's putting a lot of heat up here in the front on, uh, on Walter. There's a lot of jockeying for position right now. Trip is in third, Kowicki is in fourth. Davy Allison, fifth, T. Rudd maintaining sixth. Out back for the moment. In the lead lap. 355 complete. Here's Kowicki dropping to the inside on the 17, just for third. Got a good run on him going down in the first turn here. Getting up off twos where it's tough to do it, but looks like he's going to be able to clear him. He's run so well here, and here's Alan Kowicki taking over in third spot. What do you like about Richmond, Alan? I just, I like the layout of it. I like the old track, but I like the new track even better. And we just always seem to handle well here and run competitively. Um, if there's any one track on the circuit that would owe me one, though, this would be the place. How do you figure? Well, we've run good so many times here. We've won both, but we never won a race. We've been close and... I, have, I had a guy blow an engine in front of me, take me out when I had a half lap lead, had a lap car take me out one time. Uh, just a number of things that have kept us out of victory lane, but we always keep coming back, and one of these times it's going to be our turn, hopefully this weekend. Making it look a lot better right now, Alan Kowicki pulling into that third spot. Remember in 87, in the seven the pole here, big surprise. And here is Bobby Hamilton's car, which has lost an engine. He is slowing down and coming in, but they're not putting a caution flag out. There was some smoke, but not enough. They don't feel there's any oil down. So Bobby Hamilton is going to be retiring his uh, country time number 68 that was in 22nd position. Out of it for today, Hamilton. We can see a little stream of oil out the back of it, but as soon as he had a problem, he jumped over here on the apron, and they tell you drivers meeting all the time to get off the track as quick as possible, and he was able to do that. You'd think this was a war for the lead. It's among teammates. That's Sterling Marlin. He's in seventh place, number 22, but he wants to get back in the lead lap. His teammate, that's, quote, teammate, quote, won't have any part of it. Bill Elliott stays right there and doesn't give him an inch. Yeah, if he can get back in, there's enough time left in this lap. We've got 40 laps to go. If he can get around Bill and get another caution, he's got a chance to move way up and possibly get back up to Bill again. So, it's Bill Elliott in first. Harry Gant still lurks in second spot. Kowicki is on a run. He's up to third. Waltrip is in fourth. This one's far from over. Stay with us. Bodine. Jethro Bodine. A master of disguise. Didn't know it was me, did you? <laughs> who always gets the girl. Yeah. <laughs> and drives a really cool car. Yes, sir, that's what you call a first-class double-knot spy car. <laughs> it's three days of Jethro Bodine. Double-knot spy. 6.05 Eastern, Wednesday through Friday on TBS. Hey, that sounds like a pretty good idea. <laughs> Alka-Seltzer Plus goes to the Arctic Circle, where the toughest colds live. The cold is miserable in this environment. The Alka-Seltzer Plus takes care of the aches, the runny nose. It does the job. Alka-Seltzer Plus fights tough winter colds with a combination of ingredients you can't get anywhere else. Alka-Seltzer Plus has done exactly what I've needed it to do. If I don't go to work, kids go hungry. Alka-Seltzer Plus, tough medicine for tough winter colds. And for your tough sinus symptoms, try Alka-Seltzer Plus sinus allergy medicine.
sacks. Great! I like to get the best one. You got it. I always tell my customers, be sure to take your credit card receipts. I should have listened to myself. Whoa. Citibank for me? The other day I got a call from Citibank. Hello? Seems somebody charged some pretty fancy stuff on my card number. Citibank suspected fraud, but they said I wouldn't be responsible for the charges. I've seen Citibank look out for my customers. Seems they're also looking out for me. It's not just Visa, Citibank Visa. With 365 complete and 35 to go, now they're showing 66. Bill Elliott is in front. Alan Kowicki has just taken over in second. Harry Gant is in third. Davy Allison fourth. And it's Darrell Waldrop in fifth. Rounding out the guys in the top lap, Ricky Rudd completes it. Six people there. Sterling Marlin stays right on the heels of Bill Elliott trying to make up his lap. Interval, first to second, is two and one-tenth seconds. Ken, while you're saying lap, I can't help but look at this crowd and tell you there's 65,000 people in it and there's 60,000 seats. They're selling lap seats, and it's a very friendly crowd we have here. <laughs> first time. Looks like car number six is getting ready to come back on. And that will mean that Mark Martin will get back into it. You see him coming down pit road right there in that shot. That is Mark Martin rolling back out again with the car number six. The Valvoline Ford trying another time after it slapped the wall up here in four real hard. You can see the damage done, but he's ready to try it one more time. And a battered car number six. Bill Elliott stays in first, Kowicki in second, Gant third. Kowicki's the guy, and now it's Ford, one and two, and the Oldsmobile slips back into third spot. Again, we were looking a while ago. Davy Allison went around Waltrip, but now Waltrip is inching his way back up to Davy. This is for four. Davy Allison in fourth, the 17, Waltrip in fifth. Lap 370, 30 to go. Boy, we've seen this all day long. Somebody with the ability to run a guy down, but then the hard part is to get up under him and pass him. It seems like if you hold your line, it's almost impossible for him to get by there. Complete rundown for you folks, once again, on how the field is laid out here in this Pontiac Excitement 400 from Richmond International Raceway. Remember, we'll be back with you at Charlotte, North Carolina, the Coca-Cola 600 coming up in May. We'll be here for night action in September. That is a fantastic show, and there's going to be an additional 6,000, 8,000 seats down here, one and two. Not what, a bad seat in the house. Here. What you're telling me, the people that are sitting in laps are going to have their own place next time we're here. Yeah, it won't be nearly as much fun as it was <laughs> this year. It came late. 28, Davy Allison staying just in front of car number 17. So once again, we're seeing the Fords beginning to show their muscle at the end of this race. Neil, here they are, back to first and second. It's Kowicki, and there's that seventh place car, number 22. Here's Dick Bergman. Used to be Ken, tires were the story of the race. So often it seemed we were down here on Kid Road telling you about tires that blistered, tires that went flat, tires that went on cars that didn't match up right. But since Goodyear has come out with this new Eagle radial tire, we don't see any more of that. These tires just don't go flat. They're all the same size. And what that's really done is it's put the race back in the hands of the drivers and the crews, and it's taken it out of the hands of chance, luck, and circumstance. But there's still about 25 laps left for chance, luck, and circumstance here today. They'll have 375 in the book when they come by this time. And how many times have you gone into the last 25 laps and the world was your oyster? Nope. The next thing you knew, you were just an old plan. Yeah, don't remind me of those days, but they sure were fun. Hey, look at this shot here, Ken. It was interesting. There's the 11 car with the 22 behind it, who's the lap down. But Kowicki in the seven car is closing in. I don't know if Bill is, knows how much he has to play with in this uh, last 25 laps, but Kowicki is definitely closing in on him. There you see Alan Kowicki at number seven. Remember, that's the second place, and that's the interval, first to second. Let's take our last commercial break right now, and then, providing there's no more cautions, we'll follow the race right to the checkers. The RCA Home Theater has a VHP picture to you which makes it seem like you're really there. And you can connect your laser disc, stereo, VCR, or camcorder to it without being a rocket scientist. And with the RCA Home Theater,
you can get rid of your other remotes, too. Because it comes with Master Touch, the universal remote. Another way RCA is changing entertainment again. Wouldn't it be great if she finally came over for a beer? Nice place. And, and you offered her a Keystone, the premium beer in a can that tastes like beer in a bottle because of Keystone's specially lined can. Uh, but she said... I only drink dry beer. Oh, wouldn't it be great if Keystone made a dry beer? We do. Introducing Keystone Dry. Dry brewed and cold filtered for a great new bottled beer taste in a can. Now wouldn't that be great? Hey, Mike. Hand me my channel on flyers. Tommy, give me that flyer over there with the blue handles. What kind of flyers is that? These are channel up tone groove flyers. My dad uses them on his race car, too. For the tough jobs, and the small jobs. Reach for Channel Lock, the handiest flyer of them all. Hey guys, anybody seen the Channel Lock flyers? Channel Lock. Be sure you're getting genuine Channel Lock flyers. Look for this trademark. have dandruff, so I tried head and shoulders. Then I tried Selsun Blue. Blue is better. Selsun Blue relieves dandruff flecking better than head and shoulders, and doctors recommend it more than head and shoulders, Danorex, and Tegrin. Blue is better. Selsun Blue. Welcome back to Richmond International Raceway, Richmond, Virginia. The Pontiac Excitement 400 winding down. Let's take a look at who has led here today. We've talked about how Ford has dominated the season to date. They've done the same thing today. Bill Elliott, the first leader for 123 laps, then Davey Allison and Elliott again. Harry Gant able to sneak in there for about 47 laps and then back to Bill Elliott. So really, other than Harry Gant's opportunity to lead uh, for GM for a time in the middle of the race, it's been an all Ford afternoon, and certainly it's been Bill Elliott's afternoon. Gentlemen, it's been Elliott's afternoon up to the moment, with the exception of those little intervals. But look out because you see it right here. There is Elliott, number 11, leading, going down into the lap into a turn number one. Then you see that number seven car, lap car in between them. And the story is right there. Sterling Marlin still a lap down, still in that seventh position, trying to make the lap up. And Alan Kowicki just trying to make up time and run down Bill Elliott for the finish of this one. We're showing 385 complete. Hint right here, Kowicki has got to clear the 22 car. Right here is the only place on the racetrack he gives him up any ground. He seems to lose a little bit here, but watch him go down his back straight into three. He can really get in three good and closes up a lot of ground on him each lap. Three and four, he's real strong. That's where he's able to make time on him. There's Sterling Marlin pulling over to the inside to give him racing room. Elliott likes that high line that Gant enjoyed earlier. And Kowicki, who suffered grievous failure here, came in here one time, came out of Daytona, had made it, came here and didn't make it, then came back and sat on the pole. Here's Alan Kowicki looking down the inside on Sterling Marlin. Just about desperation time here. Sterling Marlin still trying to make up that lap and looking for something to happen to put him back in the hunt for the overall lead. What happens when you and Elliot are running side by side at the end of the race, Sterling? I don't know, the lip's been around for a long time, so I guess we'll to go to, you know, Maxwell House up there last year with us, and, uh, uh, you know, it's really a car, you know, two, two car team, because, uh, you know, old lip's been over a long time, but, uh, you know, both cars there in the shop uh, side by side, and uh, we got our boys do our thing, and uh, they do their thing. Now, what happens at the end of the race, though, when you guys are running side by side, you and the 11 car? Who's supposed to give away? What happens? I don't know. Jerry never told us yet, but I'm going to do my best to win. Yeah. Well, you saw what happened right there, and there's Junior looking on as Sterling was passed on the outside, and now Kowicki is driving for the lead. Alan Kowicki pulls to the inside on Bill Elliott. Not there. Boy, I tell you, for Sterling just to move over and get out of the way, that's a lot of class right there. He's going to leave it up to two, these, these two guys right here to win the race. Battle for supremacy. Elliott in first, Alan Kowicki in second. At Rockingham a week ago, and it was over. 
It was all Elliott. Now today, Alan Kowicki is back at Rockingham. Elliott said maybe this was just beginner's luck with Junior. He's going to need some extra luck here today as Alan Kowicki has him in the sights. Well, I'll take it. He goes down in this corner here. Bill goes high. And, uh, Alan Kowicki always goes low in this corner. See if Bill changes line. No, Bill's staying out there where he's working good. Right here, right off the corner here. Quickie's car gives up just a little bit, but he can really make it up on the other end going in the straightaway. Three and four is Quickie Strong in the racetrack. Stay right with you to the end of this event as Alan Kowicki moves down to the bottom another time and can't quite get up into that hole that was provided as Bill Elliott still tries the high side. Showing 392 on the board. Elliott looking for win number 36. After 10 years with his brothers, moves on to the Junior Johnson team. It looks like this is going to be a magnificent combination. They could take over third in the Winston Cup standings today. Alan Kowicki trying to take it all. Harry Gant is about two and a half, three seconds back in third. I, I talked before. Now there goes Kowicki back to the inside, not getting through. I just, what should the strategy be here? I tell you, all you can do is keep the heat on. You see Alan having to work the steering wheel up off the corner. He's a little bit loose, looks like up off the corner, and he's having to feed the throttle enough that he just can stay with Bill, but it's going to be hard to get under him and drive past. Right here, he usually does it, Ken. It's all right here, folks. This is for it. $690,000, lion's share. One of them almost has their paw on. Elliot Kowicki, first and second. Gant back few seconds then Davy Allison fourth Daryl Waltrip fifth Ricky Rudd six all the lead lap and nobody's sitting down on this one 65,000 people are on their feet and here he comes again Kowicki down to the inside he draws up on the rear quarter panel but can't get through again with five laps to go you don't have to worry about saving the tires you can throw them at the junkyard this time to win the race down we come here comes Kowicki now, Elliot is such a good driver, such a smooth driver, and always such a clean driver. Yeah, he gets up under Bill will give him racing room, and right here is where he's been able to do it. Here comes Kowicki another time. Down the back straightaway, headed for turn three. That's really the best count he's had. He can stay there. He's got a shot up in the middle of the corner. He's going to have to get beside him on one of these straightaways to be able to hold him off. Here he is completely beside him now. Alan Kowicki inching his way up. A step at a time. Left car. Marcus, 71 on the inside. Gets by him. Now there's a chance that Elliott had to use him as a blocker and didn't do it. Left him racing room. Lap count, you see it there. This Alan Kowicki trying again. Down to the inside. This is the best count he's had on him going in this corner. This is where he's been able to go a little bit. This is the best count he's had on him coming off this corner. Rear hangs out. Headed for three. And again, Elliott on the outside draws away. Here comes Kowicki back in the main straightaway. Made it up that time. White flag in right now. One lap to go. This is for everything. It's Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia on the outside. Wisconsin's Alan Kowicki on the inside. Side by side down the back straightaway. Even as they go to turn three. Kowicki there. Elliott pulls a little ahead on the outside, driving for the finish. Here comes Kowicki up on the bottom of the racetrack. Kowicki going for all of it. They touch, and across the line, it's Elliott. Bill Elliott has done it by about a foot to a foot and a half. Incredible finish. Alan Kowicki comes home in second spot. Harry Gant will be third. And look at the tire mark that developed in the last lap on car number 11. On the lap, they can strip all, last lap, you can strip all the paint off. Nobody cares. What a remarkable finish. And we'll be back to meet the champions at Richmond International Raceway here on TBS right after these messages. explain it you're kind of in a limbo zone time's different speed's different everything works different that sounds totally cosmic <laughs> it's out there somewhere Kyle Petty and Mellow Yellow there's nothing mellow about them for 
age-old problems like these, Goodyear introduces a brand new solution like this. Goodyear Wrangler GSA. Goodyear Wrangler GSA has a unique triple tread zone that gives you breakthrough, all service, all season traction, mile after mile, year after year. So if you own one of these, you need these. Goodyear Wrangler GSA. Then you'll know why we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. Somebody's in high gear. Today's Duracell batteries can even outperform the ones we made just a few years back. You can't top the comfort top. That last lap was so good, it deserves another look, and we'll get to it in a moment. But right now, let's go to the Channel Lock Winner's Circle interview. Dr. Dick Bergeron is standing by. Well, they say you weren't aggressive enough to win a lot of short track races, but I'm looking at this tire mark in the door. Tell us about the last lap. Well, I'll tell you, I knew Kowicki was coming, and I knew he was going to give it everything he had. And I knew I had to get down and get in the throttle coming out of turn four, or he was going to beat me, and he just about did it. He just ran out of real estate, and I ran out of real estate, and we got together, but I was still able to beat him back. I wasn't going about to back off. I didn't care what I did. Now, you were so strong all day. Did you get weak at the end, or did Kowicki get strong? Well, Kowicki got strong, and we got a little weak. The car got a little bit tight getting in the corner, and then Sterling ran me pretty hard there for a while, and I just pretty much used my tires up there. And, uh, you know, like I said, I saw Kowicki coming, and I was preparing myself for it because I knew he was going to be there, and I knew he was going to run me hard. And you won the Unical bonus, richest short track win in the history of short track racing. The money important or just winning? Just winning. You know, this, this Budweiser Amico forwards, this, it, you know, I can't say enough about these guys. You know, Tim Brewer and all the guys, I really didn't know what I was getting into when I come to this, this Junior Johnson organization, but I can't say enough good about them. Okay, right now we're going to go to Randy Pemberman. He is with Alan Kowicki, who finished second. A little bit at the start-finish line, but it was a good, clean race. And you know, actually, I got to commend Sterling too. You know, he was his teammate, and he could have really tried to screw me around, and he didn't. It was just good, clean racing, and you know, it worked out good for them. But I'm really disappointed to to not win by a couple inches there. That you know, that would have meant just an awful lot. Alan, I know you're disappointed at this point in time, but your team showed a whole lot today. You dialed that car in, and it got better all day long. Yeah, they did. Uh, you know, I said we got a lot of our problems out of the way last year, and we're going to come back and be a consistent team, and we will. We had a good run at Daytona. We would have been right in there at Rockingham last week, and they certainly knew we were there today. But, you know, I maybe I should be happy with second, but we'll be back. Up to seventh in points, Alan Kowicki. But take a look at how Bill Elliott won $272,000. Remember, he started on the pole. And with the Unical $190,000 bonus at stake. Coming to the line by 18 inches. This is the last lap, just going into it now. Neil, this is Going down this corner, like we talked about, this was the best count he had all day, even coming up off the corner. They're going to Bill said his car had a little bit of push, which on the outside, that's hard to deal with. Quickie goes in here, gets completely under him, and this time you both just stomp the throttle. You don't care if you make it to the line. They're in the gas. They come off. The back end breaks loose on Quickie. Banks off up, but Elliott pulls by a few inches and wins. And he wins $272,700. The last man to take that to bonus was Rusty Wallace a year ago. And the Unical money today is collected by... Bill Elliott and Junior Johnson, and he's won for the second straight week. And we'll tell you more of the story right after this. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. And you should, too. The monthly specials at True Value Hardware Stores. Like this 37-piece ratcheting screwdriver bit and socket set from Allenite for just $9.88. Make repairs yourself and save. In March, get it for just $9.88 while supplies last. It's just one of the terrific specials at True Value, the neighborhood hardware stores with national buying power. I'll take the special. Wouldn't it be great if your blind date, Rachel, turned out to be Rachel Hunter, the international model, and you had a romantic dinner at the beach with beer, really great beer, like Keystone Light, and things went really well. So you had Rachel build you a beach house, because it turned out that Rachel was a great little homemaker. 
Liquor. Cold filtered Keystone, Keystone Light, and Keystone Drive. Bottle beer taste in a can. So what's left to do? Then a shingle in the roof. I'll do that in the morning. <laughs> Who wouldn't that be great? Mark and my relationship goes way past business. Um, I'm sure in a previous life, he and I were twin brothers. Throughout the race, the driver and crew chief communicate. The driver complains about the car or brags about the car. It's the crew chief's job on pit stops to make whatever fixes he can to help the driver's predicament. Everyone has about the same access to equipment and technology, but the people who rub on it the most and think the most of it and think about it the most will end up winning the race. We've added the leading cough suppressant to the proven cold relief of Alka-Seltzer Plus. So now, you can relieve your cold and cough together. Introducing Alka-Seltzer Plus cold and cough medicine. Two kinds of relief from only one medicine. When what you eat and drink gives your stomach a surprise, you want a medicine that works directly on your stomach. Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, Pepto delivers powerful medicine right where you hurt. Pepto-Bismol. The Pontiac Excitement 400 has been brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. By Goodyear, number one in tires. By Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. By Valvoline Motor Oil, people who know use Valvoline. And by Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. 65,000 people here, and half of them just settling back into their seats after this incredible finish. And you see the sight from the Pennzoil Motor Oil platform camera high above the three-quarter mile track where we have seen a remarkable event dominated today by Bill Elliott, leading 348 laps, but still it was as good an event as you could ever hope to see. And part of the reason, one half of that great finish, the car owner of that winning machine by 18 inches junior johnson is standing by with dick Berkman. and junior i'm wondering you had both of your cars side by side one trying to make up his lap you call sterling back why well he's a lap down he could not you know get back and challenge for the lead and all he was going to do is is come around there him and bill side by side and anything can happen when they run side by side and and you know, got involved in a wreck, sort of like happened at Daytona. If he'd have been in the same lap with him, I'd have left him there. But it wasn't no sense of him racing Bill and him a lap down. Torrey to think championship? Uh, we don't uh, anticipate nothing. That's what we're going after, though. Uh, we had a team, a driver, and all of, you know the ingredients to go after the championship. And they sure went after the race today, and they dominated it, winning it at the end. Let's go to the STP Pit Center now and Rick Benjamin. Well, Ken, the action is over here at the uh, Richmond International Raceway and indeed an excellent finish and a very exciting race between Bill Elliott and Alan Kulwicki at the end. Let's update you on how the True Value Hard Charger Award broke down at the end of this race. You had mentioned that Bill Elliott dominated today. He dominates the Hard Charger standings, racking up more than 1,400 points today. Of course, True Value pays off over the first five spots all afternoon long. Harry Gant picking up 391 points for second. Davey Allison, the second highest uh, point getter today, 768 markers, because he led a, a fair portion of the race as well. Alan Kulwicki with his late drive and Sterling Marlin round out the top five. All of this builds all season long. There's a $50,000 pay off at the end of the Winston Cup campaign in November for the True Value Hard Charger Award. 104, 362 miles per hour, just under the 105, 397 record of Dale Earnhardt a year ago. And that record stays intact. The big money today, $290,000, belongs to Bill Elliott. We'll take a look at the final standings in today's race. Some comments from the folks that were covering the event for you right after these messages. Next Sunday on Award Theater, James Bond Weekend continues with John Connery off to the Orient. I'll be sorry to go. <laughs> on a slippery mission that sends him into the arms of danger. I must say, you have a lot of energy for a dead man, Mr. Bond. And into matrimony. The honeymoon's over. You can watch it all on TV. You only live twice. 10.35 Eastern, next Sunday morning on TBS. Looks great. But come on, I mean, you know, you could have gotten yourself another BMW or a Lexus. I suppose. But why? 
This had everything I wanted. Power, great handling, ABS, yeah, but airbag, so leather, everything. I couldn't see spending 10, 20,000 more for what? Who makes it? Pontiac. It's the new Bonneville. Nice. You're about to see how Goodyear is changing all season driving right before your eyes. Introducing AquaTread, only from Goodyear. AquaTread's advanced design channels water out of your way for dependable all-season traction, especially in the rain when you may need it most. AquaTread, the newest reason why we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear, written all over them. And isn't it true that this auto part did, in fact, come from the defendant's car? Objection! Prosecution is leading the witness. Overruled. You may answer the question. This part most definitely came from that car. And how can you be sure? I work for Napa Auto Parts. It's my job to be sure. No further questions, Your Honor. Napa people are parts experts, so they can answer any question, whatever the case may be. There were four caution periods today, total of 22 laps. Only three drivers retired from the event. Means, Michael Waltrip, and Hamilton dropping out of it. Let's get some final thoughts here today and go down on uh, pit road for just a moment. Randy Pemberton and uh, Dr. Dick are down there today giving us the information. Let's go to Dick Bergen first. Well, Ken, we can talk a lot about cylinder heads and Fords versus Chevrolets and great drivers, but the fact of the matter is it takes all of it. It takes a great team effort. And I would say for sure, Bill Elliott and this Budweiser Ford team of Junior Johnson have served notice this year that they will be very, very tough. Let's see if we can find Randy Pemberton down there in the action. Randy? Well, you can talk about this General Motors Ford battle, and one thing's for sure, not only were the wheels spinning out here for the General Motors cars today, they had some good finishes. The 17 car was in the top five. But what the bottom line is going to be, the wheels are going to be turning. They have to be able to deal with these Fords in the upcoming races to chase down that Winston Cup championship. Yeah, just a week away is Atlanta. They've got some work to do, haven't they? Well, I tell you, Atlanta's a big, high-powered racetrack, and Fords have run well in the past, even in the past years when they wasn't dominant. So they've got their work ahead of them. Yeah, well, t two tough tracks, Atlanta and Darlington back-to-back. -back. Let's go down to uh, Rick Benjamin at the STP Pit Center. Well, gentlemen, as we've heard, uh, certainly everyone's going to have some work to do if they're going to get up and be competitive against the Junior Johnson team and Bill Elliott in the saddle. But I think a call needs to go out to Harry Gant today. There was a time there when Harry looked as though he definitely had the, the strongest car. That team really came together late last year, and they seem to be off to an excellent start this year. As we see by checking the uh, Winston Cup point standings, Gant has moved to second after today's action. Gentlemen? They talk about the right combination in this sport, and Bill Elliott says... I know we've used that word a lot in the past, but we have a situation up in Ingle Hollow where I can tell Tim Brewer what the car needs, and he can provide it. We complement each other. They certainly did here today in the running of the Pontiac Excitement 400. And consider this, of the 1,092 laps run in the three races thus far this season, Ford has dominated leading 988. Bill Elliott comes home victorious by 18 inches with a record payoff of over $290,000. For Rick Benjamin, Dick Bergren, Randy Penburton, and Neil Bonnet, I'm Ken Squire. So long from Richmond. area always a busy place at a nascar winston cup race hello everyone welcome to inside winston cup racing we're at the rock the north carolina motor speedway at rockingham north carolina where they ran the goodrich 200 bush grand national race a week ago 
and the Goodrich 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race. Of course, we have those highlights for you and lots more in this half hour of Inside Winston Cup Racing. The Goodrich 500 was dominated by Ford drivers Bill Elliott and Davey Allison, with Bill eventually bringing home the bacon for his first win ever with car owner Junior Johnson.